Well, hello, everyone. It is good to do Thousand Your Door again. Like Etchy said, if you missed Thousand Your Door at AGDQ, well, now you get to see it again for uh, for this GDQ channel. So it's at a better time. But not only is it your second chance to see Thousand Your Door, it is none other than my great friend and commentator, Monado. It is his second chance to commentate for Thousand Your Door because he was not able to make it to GDQ. Hey, how's it going, everybody? <laughs> it's great to have you here, Monado. <laughs> I... I, you know, wanted you, you me. I wanted you to commentate. You know, I was told, hey, think of some commentators. I was like, Monado, instantly. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, guys, uh, this is going to be a little different than the commentary one I did at AGDQ. I'm actually going to leave it open for a lot more Q&A. So uh, during the run, if you guys have any questions that you'd like to ask about the run or anything like clarification on any trick, feel free to ask. We have the chat open. So um you know, feel free to ask any questions, but uh, I'm about ready. Uh, I'll go ahead and give a countdown, um, starting from five. Yeah. So, five, four, three, two, one, go. Good luck. Good luck, Yoshi. Thank you, thank you. Thousand Year Door. This game is 20 years old. It's coming up on 20 years old. We're getting the Thousand Year Door remake. It's a good year. Mm -hmm. 2024 is a good year. And, you know, Thousand Year Doors has been broken throughout, you know, the years. You know, the time is all the way down to, like, a 2.16. Um, there's so many insane crazy. tricks. crazy. Yeah, it's it's insane. There's there's so many awesome tricks that if you guys have not seen a Thousand Year Door run recently, you definitely want to stick around and watch it because uh, the route is pretty crazy. You know, uh, you know, Monado, do, do you know how to count? Do, do you know how to count to eight? Uh, no, I don't. That's why I use live split. Oh, that's true. Well, you know, here's the funny thing. The way we count to eight in this SB run is we we start with zero because, you know, prologue. Then we go, you know, one, seven, two, six, three, seven, eight. That's how you count to eight, right? Yeah. Yeah, that sounds about right to me. Yeah. Yeah. So I would say so. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I think, you know, that that's how we count to eight. So, yeah, that that is actually the order of chapters we're going to be doing. Not all the chapters we're going to be completing in this run. Um you know, there, there's going to be um, some chapters that we go to real quickly. There's going to be some chapters that we need to just beat the end of. And there are some chapters that we won't even visit at all. Uh, chap but Yoshi, you you need all the crystal stars to enter the Thousand Year Door. What do you mean you're going to skip some chapters? You, you can't do that. See, That's cheating. You see, contrary to popular belief, this isn't all crystal stars. It's any percent. So we got to, we just got to like, you know, go as fast as possible. Right? Uh, 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 <laughs> I'll allow oh. it. You'll allow it at you. Oh, and you put it that way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, um, starting off is going to be a little slow because we got prologue, which is the tutorial stage. You know, we we love prologue, right? I mean, it is only 10 minutes or like about 11 minutes compared to Paper Mario 64, which is like 20 minutes. Hmm. But it, this is still a really fast run overall, though. Like you were saying earlier, um, yeah, this time has come down to a two sixteen. I remember when the big breakthrough was like sub three. I know, right? I, like, I remember when the biggest over break half a decade ago. But yeah, I mean, I remember when the the uh, when the biggest breakthrough was like, I don't know, like what is it? Like, like it. no, not not even just that. I remember when like people were excited to get sub five. Oh yeah. How yeah. long have you been running this, Yoshi? So I have actually been running this uh, in February. It will be eight years. I have been speedrunning oh for about a third God. of my life. Now, listen, I am a very <laughs> young runner. I'm currently 21 years old. I started at a very young age. I'm not trying to make anyone feel old, um, <laughs> but I started at a young age. And um, it's funny. I just like realized recently when I when I got accepted to run GDQ, I was like, oh, my gosh, I've been running for a third of my life. I was like. It was wild. Yeah, and I, I think I joined at a really good time because literally a few months when I started running the game, that's when Palaskip got found. So I was pretty much one of the first runners to actually start using Palaskip. It just tells you how much you enjoy speedrunning if you've been doing it for this long and you haven't stopped. Yeah, exactly. There have been times where I've taken breaks here and there, but I've always loved it. Like, you know, the first thing I would do is, you know, I'd get done with school, which I was homeschooled, so it was actually a bit easier, but I'd basically get done with my school and then start streaming and then just do runs. <laughs> hey, do you, you know, Justin, do you like partners? Do you like partners? Yeah, I like partners. 
Well, they're pretty cool. Do you like specifically a Goombella? Uh, yeah, Goombella's pretty cool. Yeah, I, have, I like her design a lot. She's got a cool little hat with uh, the headlight on it. Yeah, it's more true. of a helmet than a hat. But oh, oh, I'm sorry, guys. I'm just really, I'm really. I, I just need to. I just need to like, you know, take a break from mashing real quickly. It's just you know, I'm just you know, I'm gonna just lose like a little bit of time. I'm just gonna kind of like mat, like you know, just kind of take it a little easy if you guys don't mind okay now i'll just start mashing again <laughs> for some context to that you have to wait for the characters in the background to stop having their little interaction of fighting each other you can take as much time as you need as long as that cutscene's going on yeah exactly um it's interesting it's the only cutscene in the game that does that yeah at least you don't need to mash through 100 i love yous in this category that is true it's funny if you want to uh, yeah. take a break from mashing, you know. Yeah, if you want to do that, you gotta find glitchless. Yeah, <laughs> good old glitchless. That's what I started with. I started with glitchless in 2019. Yeah, about oh, five years since I started running the game. Yeah, so you know, you and I. Uh, I mean, you didn't come too much longer. Oh, I guess you came a few years after me, but you kind of like ran it on and off when I started uh, running it. I believe you took it seriously yeah, I... five years ago. I attempted to learn it back in 2016, um, and I was doing mainly pre hooktail pit back then. But yeah, we uh, we had like known each other back in 2016. We didn't really talk too much, but we were definitely aware of each other man, and I've, talked in each other's streams. Man, I've known this guy for a while, eight years. Yeah, ew, that's gross. Not 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 our friendship. That's not what I'm trying to say. Just eight years. How has it been that long? I don't know. So unfortunately, uh, we uh, <laughs> we stepped on that poor Toad's contact lens. Um, so, you know, she's uh, she's unfortunately gonna have blurry vision, and uh, until we buy her some new contacts. Yeah. So um, Yoshi going over there to interact with Zesty is more or less a requirement. Um, it is a guaranteed thing you're gonna do in like every single playthrough of this game. You have to break your contact lens. There's no way around it. And then you just go into the shop to uh, order her a new one. Uh, thankfully, you don't have to buy it. You just need to tell the shopkeeper about it. And then we go ahead and buy some items while we're in the store, which I think you bought two honey syrups and a few fright masks. Yeah, I bought two honey syrups. Uh, what was it? Four fright masks and uh, three fire flowers. Uh, items will be pretty important for the run um, early on because a lot of the enemies were just going to fright mask or use a fire flower. Um, so it just like ends up saving time because we don't want to have to jump on every enemy items are just kind of the fastest way to take care of enemies especially since early yep. on they have low hp yep uh a lot of the early game enemies have also a really high percent chance to run away from freight masks and stuff like the goombas that you're going to come across in uh rug port sewers are going to be a hundred percent chance to run away from those yeah now listen I read in the chat that a lot of people like Flavio. And listen, I'm sad to say we're not going to get Flavio this run. If you want to see I am Flavio... I'm not a Flavio enjoyer. Yeah, if you want to see Flavio, watch the AGDQ run, because we did get Flavio there. Uh, but... Oh, hold on. I need to avoid the hardest tutorial. All right, I avoided it. But, okay, you joke about that, but I have definitely oh, no, I've, accidentally, like, messed that up. I have too. Even in worry. recent times. I have too. Don't worry. The reason why that tutorial is so hard to avoid is because if you press A or B, you will hit that tutorial. You need to input up an A on the first one. Yep. Most other text boxes that allow you to select either yes or no, if you just mash the B button, it'll just default to no. Uh, granted, not every text box is like that. It's just the majority of them that operate that way. Yeah. So, these enemies have a high chance to run. It's basically 100%. I've never seen anyone, like, not not had them run away so it's mm -hmm. pretty good but as i was saying earlier i know everyone loves flavio but i'm personally a frankly fan and there's a reason why i'm a frankly fan but first off we got to get through actually the hardest room in prologue there's a bunch of goombas that depending on their placement they could just really mess up your they, they could just mess up your movement because they like to charge at you like that mm -hmm. and if you jump over them they unaggro from you yeah exactly oh my gosh <laughs> I've never done that Ooh. before. There's the... That's never happened before. <laughs> I haven't had him notice me sometime. so quickly. I usually like when that... Uh, 
Spiky Goomba happens to notice you fast because then he can get around him pretty fast because then he'll, uh, he'll try to walk her a little bit and then he can sneak on by. Yeah. Works out pretty well. Yes, I get it, chat. Flavio less run. But it's okay because we're going to get some Frankly. Because... Uh... In previous... Go oh, sorry. No, no, go I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, you're good. I was just going to read something from chat. In previous r routes of the speedrun, what was Flavio faster to get? It wasn't necessarily Flavio was faster to get. We were just more so required to get him because of the way the route was structured. We were required to go into Chapter 5 to do some extra stuff because that's just uh, how it was at the time. There wasn't like anything faster known. And there wasn't any way to get around Flavio. So he was oh, just shoot. kind of forced into our, party, for it. into our party. I fell for the curse. You fell for the curse, I, I just, Yoshi. He's so convincing. I don't I don't know what it is. He's just so convincing. Now I'm cursed to turn into a paper airplane. Yeah, it's unfortunate. You know what? I'm so upset. I don't even want to go to the Thousand Year Door. What if we just like jump across to that platform to get to chapter or to get to chapter one? Yeah, I know. I was about to say, Yoshi, where, where are you going? Yeah. We're supposed to go to the Thousand Year Door, but, you know, like you said, would you, would you mind I want to go there. explaining how it's, like, what we have to do to jump really far? To jump really far? Oh, that Goomba. Oh, you didn't jump very far there. I didn't jump very far there. Nah. Oh, man, he hurt. <laughs> he hurt me. Oh, to Are you talking? Oh, I know what you're talking about. You're talking about speed swaps, aren't you? <laughs> no, not really. I'm talking about no? the first glitch of the run. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, so hazard respawn glitch is a glitch that Yoshi will be doing in just a little bit. Um, you can skip going to the thousand year door entirely um, by entering this room over here. And on the first frame that you enter the room, if you happen to jump once, as soon as you enter the room and jump again onto the boat panel, it will not properly update your respawn point because it doesn't uh, update Mario's respawn point on the first frame of you entering a room. In most cases, some of them, some rooms are a little bit different. Um, but by touching a hazard, such as the water here, it will put Mario into the center of the room. And it just so happens that the platform is right there. Yeah, it's really great. If that was like any further, <laughs> then that wouldn't be possible. Yeah, there are times where you can get like some sort of pixel displacement and you'll just push over to the left a little bit and land back in the water. Yeah. But yeah, so I said we like Frankly. Frankly's going to be following us for like most of the run. <laughs> yeah, he will be. Frankly, there is a flag um, when you enter the Thousand Year Door cutscene, like when you step on the pedestal for the first time where Frankly is scripted to leave your party. But that doesn't happen. So he's just kind of with us for a while. And the reason why I like Frankly is because he saves time. He does. Lavio doesn't. Yeah. Lavio loses time. Well, like, how much time did that cost you to go out of your way for? Like eight minutes or something? Like seven minutes. Seven? Okay. Yeah, and all Crystal Stars, he would cost like a minute or something if you were to get him in ten like if you were to get him. Yeah, because you just failed to skip the cutscene there. Yeah. So in this next room, there's another hazard respawn glitch we can do. I'm not gonna do it because it's basically <laughs> something you would only do if you're attempting to go for like world record or like a really good run. Similar thing, uh, for some reason, uh, you can actually like go pretty far. Just scared. Yeah, I I'm just scared. You can actually go pretty, <laughs> you can actually go pretty far into the room before th your position gets updated. And then you can jump on that pipe and then jump on the, I actually don't know what it's called, but it's that little blue thing that's like right there. A little with, thing sticking with, out of the ground. Yeah, with the eyes. And you can jump in the water, and then you'll actually fall right into the water, and you can get a frame-perfect jump out of the water. But if you miss it, you will continuously fall in the water. You get multiple chances, but it only saves about 25 seconds, and you can game over. So, yes, it's not really ideal. Yes, you can. No, I wouldn't say so. Yeah, not really ideal. I'm crazy enough to do it in my max upgrade runs, though. I'm also crazy enough to do it in my any percent runs. That was one of those instances where, in some rooms, the respawn point doesn't update as soon as Mario, like, walks into the room. Because the trigger for it just happens to be pretty far away. Yeah. We were talking about speed swaps earlier, so if we want to actually talk about them now, you can go ahead. Alright, well, um, you'll notice that uh, Yoshi is, like, jumping around with Mario a lot. That's not really just for show. 
um, the uh, vertical and horizontal speeds for Mario are actually different. You'd think that they're exactly the same, but they're not. When Mario moves up and down, he's actually moving at a bit of a faster pace than if he was moving left or right. And if you input a little bit upwards and start jumping to either the left or the right and continuously keep jumping frame perfectly, you will keep your momentum that you had. I, I guess you could say you stored it. Yeah. Um, when you started moving up and down. Yeah, exactly. It's pretty, and it's pretty cool. Yeah, it is. And you might you might think, oh, frame perfect. That's got to be pretty tough. Yeah, you, you kind of get used to it after a while. This game is also 60 FPS. So when we're saying frame perfect stuff, it's, it's a very tight of window. A second, yeah, essentially. It is a very, very tight window. Yep. So here is a force encounter that we have to get. So that other encounter with the spike Goomba, I didn't really want to get. You lose about 10 seconds every encounter you get. But this one is essentially impossible to avoid, but it's not actually impossible because the TAS is able to skip this room. But I'm not even going to go into explaining how it's done because it's just not possible for RTA. Right. To give it in short terms, you would essentially just bypass the loading zone and then walk out of bounds it's it's not rta viable though right it's a uh, you use a trick called goombella buffering which is an rta viable trick it's just not used in this run as far as i'm aware uh it will be used for one point one point or, okay. or two points uh, it'll be used for pal skip and uh a part in chapter two which i'll get to later okay oh yeah yeah okay i know what you're talking about now. <laughs> Ghost Kumo in the chat. The ill zil with the not so salty run back. Yeah, this isn't salty you whatsoever. Got that right. Shouts to Ghost Kumo who commentated, who was one of my commentators for a thousand year door during AGDQ. Yeah. All right. Hopefully this Koopa is nice to me. All right, there we go. There we go. You know, she's just picking up some more items along the way. Um, like we were talking about earlier, a lot of these items make uh, some of these early game flights go on by a lot quicker. So, yeah, buying a few in the store and then picking some up along your way is the best approach. So, Justin, do you like game shows? Yeah, I'm a fan. Well, we're going to oh, be yeah. playing oh, trivia. I liked Wheel of Fortune back in the day. Well, we're going to be playing trivia. How the heck are we going to know what these questions and answers are? They're in Japanese. Well, Yoshi, I got some good news for you. You do? They're exactly the same every time. Oh, my gosh. So you're telling me it's one, three, four, two, three? That is exactly what I'm saying. It is one, three, four, two, three. Yeah. So yeah, the answers are the answer order at least is the exact same. Mm. The answers aren't quite the same, like specifically because there's one question that's like, what do you like? How much is it if you buy like a sleepy sheep and a fire flower? In the Japanese version, it's twelve total, but oh, okay. in the English version, it is sixteen. So. The answer order is the same, but not all the answers are quite the same. But it's the same order, so it, it's all good. Right. I wonder if the questions are the same. I can't read Japanese, so I don't actually know. Yeah, besides... Do you, do you happen to know that? I, I actually don't know whatsoever. Besides one point, there's actually really no reason for us to memorize Japanese. The only point that we'll need to essentially not exactly memorize Japanese, but uh, memorize certain characters is in Chapter 3, because we'll have to be going through the minor league and the conditions are random and you know it's in japanese so we need to kind of translate what it would be for english which is actually not that hard to do it's just looking for certain characters correct Ooh, nice fp drops so these are forced encounters that we need to get because we need to get the sun and moonstone at the start of the chapter mm -hmm. we saw a dragon fly over us and we basically need to get the sun and moonstones in order to go into hooktail castle because hooktail we, we kind of missed the the segment where it said but hooktail is one of the guardians of the crystal star correct you have got that right and there is a Koopa sitting in Hooktail's belly right now that a certain party member Ooh. wants to avenge that we don't have yet. Yeah. Spoiler alert, sorry. I wonder who that is. I don't know. Maybe it's that Koopa that like introduced us at the beginning. It was like, oh hey, welcome to Petalburg. Maybe. Yeah, he he looked like he was real unique, so. 
Or maybe it was that girl Koopa that's, that we saw in the background. That's sarcasm. <laughs> maybe. Oh, maybe it's the uh, the um, town elder. True. He's in his ripe adventuring ages, of course. Of course. So welcome to kind of the first, like, mini boss, I guess you could say, uh, of this run. Well, we skipped Blooper, but because uh, Blooper, we usually would be like the first boss. But this is kind of a mini boss where we have to fight the fuzzy and something we neglected to mention earlier. But the difference with this game opposed to other games is you can actually super guard, which does one damage to a decent amount of enemies. And I'm going to go ahead and see if I can get it because it is kind of required. There we go. I, there go. I redeemed myself. Last last run at AGDQ, I missed the super guard, but that, is, that I was completely fine with missing it because I got a very sweet and amazing donation from my girlfriend that almost Aww. made me weep, and I missed Aww. the super guard in the process just because I almost cried. <laughs> she messed you up. But in a good way. It was in all, a good way. <laughs> all, for, all for love. So yeah, now we got some more backtracking to do. And as you can see, frankly, he's just still chilling along. He's just cruising along with us. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing I should probably mention about uh, Super Guarding is that it is a three-frame window yes. to be able to hit that. So it's not super hard, but for someone who's not really experienced with, like, you know, tight windows like that, it can be pretty challenging. Yeah, you get used to it over time, though. Super Guarding is, like, it may sound kind of daunting, saying like oh it's a three frame window in 60 fps but once you like get the idea of it down with like each individual enemy in the game it's, it's works like clockwork it's very easy to understand and grasp them yeah exactly so going back back through the peaceful pedal metals or pet pedal metal pedal metals I, I i like i messed that up pedal metals yoshi Yes. I don't know how to tell, tell this to you, but this is Pedalberg. Pedalberg. That's right. This isn't Pedalberg. This is Pedal... This is Pedalberg. Oh my gosh. I don't know my lord. <laughs> this is Pedal Metals. There you go. Gee, I wonder who this guy is. I'm sure he won't be important at all. Nah. Oh, wait. What a fun fact. Oh, I was going to say, I can't read Japanese, but I think he's trying to tell us that he wants to join us. No. I, what what would make you think that? Is it the like partner introduction screen that's currently going on, nah. or is it the fact that they're currently trying to teach us how to use coops in battle and also in the field? No, I, I doubt it could be that. I have no idea. But what's your fun fact? I want to hear your fun fact. Oh, I was just gonna say you technically can skip coops. Technically. Technically. Um, if you decline him um, and make your way over to Hooktail Castle and insert the Sun and Moonstone, you'll notice that you need both Mario and Koops to be able to hit the switches in time. But you can just barely, 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 barely. yeah, just barely hit both switches with just Mario. And as far as I'm aware, it's like... Uh, what, like a frame or two, maybe, yeah. to be able to hit that? I don't think it's RTA pot like viable no. at all. No, and even then, we not. need we need coops for certain stuff, anyways. Exactly. So even if there even if there was um, any reason for you to like skip coops, if he wasn't, uh, if he, what am I trying to say? <laughs> I don't even know what I'm trying to say. You you just need coops. That's it. If you could there's, skip, there's no him, real way to it, skip it, it, it would be like just not ideal for us exactly even in tasks i'm pretty sure because of some of the tricks that are required with them i know malio had tried to use to skip using coops at one point in time but then it ended up not working out yeah shouts to malio by the way he is an excellent taster this game has made like what eight tasks of any percent and is currently working on more than that it's gonna be like 10 now probably and is currently making a 100 percent task which i'm excited to see that mm hmm but using the power of coops, we were able to get to Tail Castle. Now we're in. We are in. This is one of the only dungeons we're going to be seeing. But it looks pretty cool. Yeah, it does. This is one of the most interesting looking, uh, yeah, I guess dungeons, you could call them that. 
Yeah, it's really it's really gonna be interesting, like what all the dungeons are gonna look like in the remake. Because, you know, it's gonna be like a lot more polished and remade, obviously. Yeah. I am so excited for the remake of this game. Oh, oh man. I know you saw my reaction to that. Oh my <laughs> gosh, yeah. Great reaction from Monado here. You got know, really I mean, lucky with those Koopas there. Yeah, I got really lucky. Yeah, it's like, because I don't know if anyone was expecting a Thousand Year Door remake. I wasn't. No. I I think, like, seeing the remake for Super Mario RPG kind of just opened up the door of, like, oh, Nintendo is going to be kind of willing to remake some of these games again. Maybe they're trying to see if people are interested in them. And then their next direct later, I, you know, I, I expected that we could possibly see a remake of this game after the announcement of SMRPG, but I didn't expect it that soon. I don't think anybody expected I that soon. I, I, I've been called know. crazy. Yeah. You want to know it's crazy? The fact that we can use these fire flowers to quickly take care of this boss. That's true. That is so true. Yeah. This, this boss can be a little annoying, too, if you, like, somehow don't have an extra fire flower or something in here. He can spawn in, like, another dull bones, and yeah. it'll waste some time. I've definitely done that before yeah. in my early days of running it. Yeah. Now, one thing I need to make sure is I need to make sure I upgrade BP first. Now, it's funny. In most yep. Thousand Year Door runs you see, we always upgrade FP first. It's always FP first. But in this route, we don't actually upgrade FP first. We actually don't upgrade FP at all. We want to upgrade BP a lot. And then at some point, we will upgrade Mario's HP. Yoshi, you forgot the shine sprite. Oh, you're so right. I thought I was playing definitely need Mario that. Sunshine. Oh, you know what? That's, that's fair. There are piantas in this game, so I'd get I, I would make that the same mistake too. Yep. And what was that that you just picked up there? That was a castle key, and I did a trick called flips uh, skip. What you can do I was is talking about the star piece. Oh, the star piece! Yeah, it's a star piece. It's going to oh, be used okay. to buy a very important badge that will help increase my odds to get an item drop. And you might be thinking, why the heck do I need an item drop? What's that going to be useful for? You oh, will, it's really useful for battle. Yeah, it's very useful for battle. But you will hopefully see. I say hopefully see because it adds a lot of RNG to the run. And we might not we might not see the item if it takes too long because I do have a backup save. Uh-oh. Indiana Jones moment I activate. I activate a booby trap. Oh, no. I totally didn't see this coming with all the holes in the floor oh, gosh, indicating okay. that there would oh. be something raising go. on the floor. I gotta go. I think maybe the speed swaps are helping me a little bit. I can't speed swap downward. Oh, Yoshi, you gotta get out of here. You're gonna, you're gonna die. Oh my gosh, I had, I only had like 30 seconds left. Oh my goodness, gosh. you barely made it out of there. Yeah. Real quickly, just to delve oh. back on one of the tricks that I did. Uh, I did flip skip, which just basically allows you to skip hitting that switch with the staircase and save some time. It's very easy. Yeah. Yeah. Very simple trick. Oh, this guy's very got convincing. This nice he is. Yeah, I would agree with you. Uh, he definitely wasn't going to curse you. Oh, uh, he just did curse me. Oh, my God. Dang it. Dang it. I can't believe I messed up again. I got cursed again. Okay, you know what? I'm putting my foot down. I will not get cursed again. Mark my words. I will not get cursed. I will not get cursed again. You know, I believe you, actually. Thank you. I, I don't think you'll get cursed again. Yeah. Let's go ahead and put on some badges, and then I think it's good to check my email every so often. Yeah, probably, I would say so. <laughs> to give some context as to why he checked his email there, every email that you get in the game, uh, if you don't check that one, uh, it'll give you like a little notification telling you to read them. So if you read one, it'll never make that pop up again. Yep, so I'll get a bunch of emails, but it won't give me a notification being like, hey, you should check your emails, you know? Like, yeah. like, hey, I, did you know that you can look at the email SP? Like, I got a question for chat. D does anyone actually, like, you know, besides maybe, like, really important emails, like, for stuff that you maybe you bought or something, does anyone actually check their emails? Because I feel like I have, like, so many unread emails that I do not check. No. <laughs> I need to clear out my email account because Google is yelling at me, like, oh, you're running out of room there, bucko. You need to clean your emails out. Yeah. I think unless it's, like, marked as important or it's, like, a confirmation for something I need, like a hotel or something, I don't check mm. my emails whatsoever. 
The only time I ever pay attention to emails is when I know like I have something coming in the mail or something. Like the, the actual mail, not the email. Like, oh, yeah. your package is now out for delivery. Exactly. Anybody else do that? Where you immediately order something online and you're like, oh, I got to check the shipping two minutes later because <laughs> yeah. I know that'll definitely <laughs> be on the way now. Yeah, that's what I do. Yep. Quick note, it is actually possible to jump to this window and do a trick called window jump. Saves about eight seconds, but you lose like 20 seconds if you miss it. So I'd like never go for it. Yeah, it really isn't all too worth it. I, I know a lot of people used to do it uh, back in the day, um, but it just, I don't know. I, I've never really felt the need to have to go to win do window jump in a category in categories in this game. I've done it eight a seconds few times. is not really much. Yeah. Yeah, I've done it a few times with the categories you'll never see me do window jump in is 100% and glitchless. Yeah, glitchless especially because um, there is a backup you can do if you happen to fall down um, to get back up to the room quicker where you just flip out of bounds. Um, and the way out of bounds works in this game is where if you uh, if you fall out of bounds, Mario will be placed in, at the last like loading entry he came to. So he'd be put back up at the, uh, the top door. But you can't do that in glitchless, obviously. Oh, I got the swag Cause... jump. <laughs> nice. Yoshi, why didn't you pause the game like nine times, times. Frame perfectly? Yeah, so you can get past the dull bones there. I'm sure that's definitely RTA viable. Definitely. So for some context, that fight is technically possible to avoid, but you have to pause frame perfectly like up to like 10 times or something like um, Monado mm. said. Um, done in TAS, not done yeah. RTA, not done for RTA runs. I think people no. have like unironically like attempt or like just ironically attempted it, but mm -hmm. it, I don't think anyone's actually saved time from it. I'm pretty sure you're right about that. Yeah. Oh man, it's really unfortunate that I got cursed with the paper airplane ability. Oh yeah, I see someone asking why is the professor with me? The professor wanted to join me on the adventure, but the reason yeah. why that's uh, he joined us is because we skipped the flag, the flag where he's supposed to leave. Uh, earlier in the run, so mm -hmm. now he's with us. He's stuck with us for a bit. Yoshi. Yeah, another shine sprite. Missed the shine sprite. You're right. I also missed the one in the treasure room, and I also missed all like those chests. Dang. Ah, oh, goodness. You're right. Oh, I might as well go back for him. I I'm sorry, Etchy, that you trust that you trusted me to do this run, and I'm just missing <laughs> all the goodies. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm supposed to collect everything. I'm pretty sure the items that are in the chest in the, I guess, the treasure room are like just a mushroom and a honey syrup anyway. I think one I think of them is an ultra shroom, but... Really? Yeah. Oh, I know the one in chapter two is an ultra shroom. Wait, you're right. That's the ultra shroom one. Yeah. I, okay. Yeah. What's happening in this dark room? Oh, that's a big Nothing. dragon. I like the attention of detail to see where she like actually gets into the room because there's like a giant crack in the wall in one of the pillars. I never there. noticed that. Yeah. So you'd think, how did she get in here? There's a giant crack. Yeah. You can see it on the stage too. That I don't think I ever noticed. It's behind her head. Oh, wow. I barely see it right now. But when before she dropped onto the stage, you can see it. She comes All right, I got the nine. I tried to go for the 10. So this is actually the hardest boss of the run. The reason? Because it is the one boss that requires the most amount of power bounces. And power bounces are kind of hard. So to go into like a little more detail on why power bouncing is so hard is because it believes it starts, st it starts like at what, seven frames? and then it goes down by one frame every like jump you get. And the eighth bounce to get the ninth bounce is frame perfect. And we were talking about earlier how this game is frame uh, or is uh, 60 FPS. So it is kind of hard. You have got that right. Yeah, I want the thousand coin. Aw, she tricked me. She did trick you. Why would you select it if you knew that she was gonna trick you? I just felt like it was faster just to get eaten. By like one by five HP. Speaking of getting eaten, she kind of eats the toads and regains uh, 10 HP. So you know what? I think we are going to kill her with this bounce.
Oh, I tried to go for the 10 for swag. But that's okay. That Dang. was a really good fight. That is probably one of the best scenarios you can ask for for the fight. The best mm. fight you can get is an 11 bounce and a 9 bounce. And mm. then you can save a little bit of time, but it's a very... I think it's like 1 in 3 that you'll get it. Like a 30% chance that you'll get it. Or no, I think it's like 11% actually. So, not very likely. Think. Yeah, yeah, it's not something like that because it, uh, it's a one in what a one in three chance after like the ninth bounce or something. Yeah, and you can get the first bounce that you can get capped at, which uh, capped is just a term we used that basically means that you're forced to stop the action command. Uh, that happened earlier. I got capped, but mm. that the ninth bounce is the first that you can get capped, and you need to get an eleven bounce, which is not the easiest. Oh, hey, you were talking about a, a Koopa inside, uh, uh, what is it? Hooktail's belly? Do you think that's his father? Yeah, who's this? Do you think that's his father? You sure? I don't, they don't, look, they don't look anything alike. That's true. Well, <laughs> we got one of the crystal stars, so that's good. Yeah, now you just need six more. Yeah. Which I'm sure you're definitely going to get all of them, right? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm going to get all of them. I'm totally not going to only get <laughs> three in the run. Some keen eye viewers might have noticed that when Hooktail went to scoop up some of the audience, uh, that the audience seemingly just appeared out of nowhere. That's because earlier when Yoshi skipped going to the Thousand Year Door and didn't get the first special move being Sweet Treat, the audience actually doesn't appear at all until uh, you get your first special move. And <laughs> yeah. they'll uh, they'll start showing up now that he has his first Crystal Star. Yeah. By the way, quick, quick reminder, stay hydrated, everyone. True. So true. Also, frankly, what are you doing with what are you doing on the X not side? He's trying to remain neutral. Oh yeah. To all parties involved. Yeah. So welcome to the part of the run where we get a little bit of a break, but at the same time we don't really get a break because we still have the mash text. It is the mm -hmm. Peach intermission and then soon to come the Bowser intermission, where we just kind of have a quick thing. Well, I say quick, it's like a few minutes long. But we have a segment with Peach and Bowser where it's like, hey, you know, this is going on. Lore. The lore of the game. One day, I believe, we'll be able to get Turbo allowed. One day. One day. One day. Ooh, we got some ghosts here. I'm sure the one in the red hat is completely unremarkable and definitely would not join your party. Nah, yeah. But we love her. V yeah. Vivian, exactly. my beloved. Exactly. She is one of the best party members in the game. Hi, frankly. See, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, frankly sort of follows us because he's basically programmed to follow whoever the player is, and that does include Peach. Yeah, since, uh, uh, coming back to earlier, since uh, he was never removed from your party, there's no check in the game to have him removed from your party here. Because, you know, they, they never expected him to do with you in this party. It'd be extra development for nothing. Yeah. <laughs> and he just sort of spawns in right there. We love that. Yep. <laughs> just drops in. <laughs> we love that. So did any of you ever wish that your computer could just talk to you? Well, this is Tech. He's a computer who can talk to Peach. His story goes a little bit My computer can talk to me if I go to Google and uh, oh, type true. in some sort of uh, like hey Google thing. thing. Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. Text lore goes a little farther than just being a talking computer. He essentially is like, hey, I want to know what love is because mm -hmm. he like mentions that I forget exactly what he says, but he like mentions something about Peach and Peach is like, wait, are you in love with me? He's like, wait, what is love? I need to learn about this. I'm supposed to be the perfect computer. And L-O-V-E. Yeah. Hmm. Never heard of it. Yeah, never heard of it. Frankly, he's not allowed to go back to Peach's room. He's he's stuck in there with tech. Yeah, he got trapped. I guess that's a good question. Someone asked, why are we playing on Japanese? I guess we forgot to mention that. So Japanese is technically sort of the fastest version. It's, 
I believe English is actually a little faster by like, I don't know, like what, 10 seconds or something, or I don't remember. But Japanese is a lot easier. English is a lot harder to do the run on. There's a, a lot、mm. of tricks that are different,、um, and it's just not worth doing. Like the last trick, Palace Skip, it's so hard on English or like on anything that isn't Japanese. Yeah, so、uh, I guess we can explain it when we get there, but、um, Palace Skip essentially just takes a lot longer to do on English just because the same method isn't available to you on JP. Or, I'm sorry, the same method on JP isn't available to you on the English version. Yeah, it is technically better odds to get the, one of the item drops that is needed for Palace Skip on English, but it's still just not worth it. Yeah, seriously. You're gonna have a much more fun time、uh, if you, you know, if you decide you want to run Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door, you can join the TTYD Discord to go ahead and do that. Where,、um, where can I find anyways, Discord?、Uh, sh shameless plug on that.、Um, <laughs> uh, but if you decide you want to run this game,、uh, the JP version is probably the most accessible version to get because it's Overall, an easier run because of the things stated earlier. And it's also cheaper to find online. Yeah, it's funny. It's actually cheaper than getting a US version of this game.、Mm -hmm. By the way,、uh, you mentioned shameless plugs. I have one.、Uh, you have a shameless plug? If you're not already following Yoshizilla and Minato on Twitch, please do so. Twitch names are shown on the stream.、Uh, if you're enjoying the run at all, definitely drop them both a follow. That's not shameless at all. That's very thoughtful. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, you know, here, I'll do, I'll do a shameless plug as well. If you guys aren't already following the GDQ channel, you should definitely do that because this isn't the only、hey. run that we're doing. There's been a bunch of hotfix runs that, that have been going on. You're just here for a thousand year door? You should go watch some other runs. I know that there's runs happening, I believe, tomorrow. So. Exactly. And, and there was more after this、run. one, too. Yeah. So, yeah. Plenty coming up. You know, contrary、exactly. to popular belief, GDQ is not an only like two, like,、uh, two streams like, a year stream. It's a two events a year, but there are a bunch of other stuff that happens. You have got that right. These Hopic shows are a fun time to watch. Yep. So we get an email right here that Peach actually sent from Tech telling Mario that she's basically okay, but she has no idea where she is. So we'll have to, we'll have to figure out where she is at some point. And a little thing I want to mention is I got a badge earlier called Mega Rush Partner. Now, in this game, you could actually buff your partners. There are partner badges that you can get. And Mega Rush P is going to be very useful. You have got that right. There's also quite a few badges. Actually, I don't. I don't even know if you do that in any percent, but、uh, at least in other categories, there are a bunch of badges that you'll pick up just to sell. Yeah, we do that in any percent. You do? Okay. I, I figured it just wasn't completely certain. Yep. So, making use of the speed swap to actually get across those platforms a bit faster, and you can also do it here to make that platform、nice. cycle. That is, yeah, that is a very tight cycle. Make that cycle. A little interesting thing, too, is on the US and PAL versions of the game,、um, the platform cycle there is actually a little bit different compared to JP. And that's because、uh, they made it so it moves a little bit closer to the edges of each individual platform. I believe it actually、so、does hit the、that. edge. Yes. And、uh, due to one of them hitting the edge, you can actually do a US and PAL exclusive skip called Goomba Trio Skip. And that is why English and PAL is technically a little faster than Japanese. But again, it's just not worth it. Yeah. What, what's, the, what's that door behind us?、Uh, that is the.、Um, I feel like it's the pink, least, the pink door. Yeah, I feel like it's at least like 800 years old. Like, I don't know. Probably. Just based off of this. It's, it's got seven stars on it, so it's got to be like. r e l a t e d It's gonna have something to do with stars. Yeah, so like maybe the seven star door. Mario 64, that's what it is. No, 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 no. I think it's, I think it's the、uh, SMRPG Legend of the Seven Stars door. You know, kind of jokes aside, you know, now that I think about it, a lot of games really, a lot of like the RPG games, like, well, I guess specifically Mario RPG and the first two Paper Marios, it's really all about stars. Seven, Legend of the Seven Stars. 
There's seven yeah. star spirits in Paper Mario 1. There's seven crystal stars. I mean, there's technically... They killed that trend after this game, though. There's technically Sticker Star, but... <laughs> Anyways. There's only five in that game, but... Yeah, that's true. But anyways, we actually go to the Thousand Year Door this time, and we get to figure out where the next Crystal Star is. But I, you know, I don't think we need to go to Chapter 2. I mean, we were talking about how to count to, to 8 earlier. So we mm -hmm. just did 1. Now we gotta do 7. Yeah, that's how that works. Also, quick little note, right? Frankly isn't actually in the house, but then he just comes out right here. Like, he was there at first, so it kind of looks like he's he really has been traveling with us this entire time. You uh, you can actually hear him, like, hopping around, um, and I'm pretty sure the Frankly that's in your party is stuck behind the wall, like the bookcase behind Frankly's <laughs> yeah. wall. Yeah. So when you funny. go through the door, he kind of just pops on through. Yeah, exactly. So I guess also, like coming can... up right here. Oh, go, you go ahead. No, I was just going to say that uh, coming up here, Yoshi needs to go ahead and um, activate uh, these flags over here to be able to get into Chapter 2. Because unlike a lot of other things that are in this game, uh, there most of these um, activation stuff are based off of uh, sequence events in the game. Um, and unfortunately, this isn't the case. The only way to open the wall up to be able to get to Chapter 2 is by directly speaking with Punio here. And that is the entire reason that we need to beat Chapter 1. Otherwise, if yeah. we were not required to do this, we would be able to uh, get the un the Paper Mode Curse um, and then just skip doing this entirely. Yeah, exactly. We'd be able to leave Chapter 1 after that. Yeah, that's that's what I was about to talk about. We have to basically open Chapter 2, but we don't actually need to start Chapter 2. We will be going into Chapter 2 earlier or later, mm -hmm. but for now, we are going to go back to, up to Rokeport. We're going to buy some items, buy the contact lens, and then we're going to be doing a pretty important trick. It's actually one of the tricks. Um, it's a trick that's been around for a while, but the specific method basically broke any percent and it was like okay well we get to skip a bunch of stuff now yeah this is probably one of the most like i don't know exactly how to there's so many it. methods for this yeah like it, it it felt like when terry was discovered it it was like the one method for a quite a long while and then seemingly out of nowhere there were like five or more different methods just found and now it's one of the most versatile glitches in the game where you can do multiple different methods. Obviously, there are some that are better than others and some that you just don't do anymore. But the fact that there are so many different ways to achieve the same glitch is pretty crazy. Yeah. So I sold that live stream and that in coupon. That in coupon was actually a backup item because I got an encounter. Getting an encounter loses five coins, usually. So... <laughs> Basically sold some items, and I bought a bunch of Fright Masks. Fright Masks are quick ways to take care of enemies, as you have seen. But now, mm -hmm. it is time for TRE, which stands for Teleporter Room Early, and I will go ahead and let my good commentator, Monado, explain it while I am doing it. All right, so Teleporter Room Early, as we were talking about earlier, is a way to get into Chapter 7 way earlier than intended. And by doing this and entering Chapter 7, we can advance Mario's, or I guess the game sequence point, up to a Chapter 7 state. And for this specific method that Yoshi is going to be doing right here, he is unplugging his controller and remapping his control stick by holding it in a specific direction and plugging it back in, which resets the neutral position of it. And currently it is at... I, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know the exact uh, angle that it's being held at right now. It's at like 358 or something or like 158 or something is like what, okay. what it is called. I can be quiet if you need to focus. No, you can do it. Okay. Um, but essentially what he's trying to do right now is clip into a very tiny little gap in between the wall and the door. And this is a, as far as I'm aware, it is a... Frame perfect, pixel perfect, and angle perfect trick. You need to unspin jump, which is a frame perfect trick like that. in a two frame window through the crack in the door, and he got it. It was like that. 
That was really good. Yeah, that was uh, that was that was a lot better. Really good. Th- that was a lot better than uh, AGQ. You know, AGQ that w- that was still like an amazing run, and I loved that run. But uh, unfortunately, it took a little bit longer to get because you know it's a, it is a very very hard trick. But right there, yep. we got it very fast. So someone actually good job. asked. That was really good. Thank you. Someone actually asked if this is better than the flurry method. It's better in the sense of it's faster, but in mm-hmm. my opinion, the flurry method is a lot easier. So we were talking about. So we were talking <laughs> about flags earlier. Funny enough, chapter seven is not actually advanced to the correct sequence and the correct flag until you read that red note. We actually don't need correct. to read the red note at all, technically. All like the note itself doesn't really do much, but it actually advances the sequence. So yeah, for some reason, like there isn't, there's really no realistic reason as to why the developers decided to do that. Because when you enter chapter seven through like normal means, if you know the code for the red note, you don't have to read it. You're not required yeah. to go down the elevator and read it. If you know what it is and you've memorized it or written it down in uh, previous playthroughs of the game, you can just go to the room and type in on the keypad. So for them to have um, added a sequence point to it, uh, saved us quite a lot of time. Because as far as I'm aware, if uh, if the uh, sequence point didn't get updated from the red note there, there would be no reason to come here. Like it would, it would not serve any purpose. Yeah, but it's really good that like, it's really amazing just to think how this run works. Like we, we're really lucky with what the developers like put as sequence positions and sequence points, because if these didn't exist, then the run would be a lot different and certain things probably wouldn't be possible. Mm. Bye, frankly. Oh, Yoshi, let me ask you a question. Are yeah. you a fan of quizzes? I am. You did one earlier, so I feel like you, you are. Is this going to be like quiz two electric boogaloo? <laughs> But hold on. Yeah, that, that, that actually kind of got me a little bit. <laughs> so we were talking about earlier, this combination is always the same on most of the versions, except for the French version. The French, the French version is actually a word, which I believe it's actually excuse is what it translates to. Yeah. Yeah, it's so weird. You have to type in excuse instead of a, a code. Well, excuse a me. Oh, wait, that's a Zelda reference. Eh, it's still Nintendo. It counts. So similar with this quiz, same uh, same answers. Well, same like same like answers. You you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I get what you mean. It's the answers are located in the same spot, regardless if the questions are the same or not. Yep. They're not randomized or anything. I know somebody had asked in the chat earlier um, if these quizzes get randomized for a randomizer of this game. Unfortunately, that doesn't exist for T2ID yet. yet. But there is somebody I know that is working on one. It's very, very early stages, but it's happening yeah. eventually. Also, can we get some like, you know, if aw, encounter. Can we oh, get, that's unfortunate. So, okay, after I run away from this battle, can you guys, you know, put like your cat jam emotes or something? Because the x Not Fortress music is just so great. Like, it's, it's great. Yeah, it's pretty good. It is pretty good. I personally think it's a little overhyped, but it's still good. It's still good. Bye, frankly. Bye, frankly. <laughs> so we can actually, we can complete chapter seven if we want to right now, but we have no reason to because we don't have our super overpowered Yoshi. Uh, you'll know what I mean right. later. So we're actually going to leave right now. And <laughs> okay, so we did kind of a little bit of seven. So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to go into chapter two. After we do a few things, I'm going to be getting something called a super jump, or that is what this trick is called, at least. I'm going to store a jump by essentially using coops and opening this door at the same time. And that's going to store a jump, which that should be good. Yeah, you, I'm pretty sure you got it. So now what happens is if I change Mario's Y speed by going over like an incline and I press A, well, if you didn't know any better, you'd think I have cheat codes on, but it's not. It's not actually cheating. It's really funny whenever people point out that you're using uh, like hold L to levitate whenever this uh, glitch is being done, because in the practice codes, at least uh, the like levitate code is not really good, in my opinion. 
Like Mario sinks down after a little bit. Yeah. Turned into a super jump. In this case, you can actually go pretty high up. And now I'm going to open the chest just like that. Nice. And I can get the Ultra Hammer early. Now, there's actually another way you can get that Ultra Hammer if you want to. It's technically a little safer. What you do is you basically go to the edge of the roof and then you line yourself up in the corner of the chest and then you turn around and press A to open the chest with Mario. And I think it's frame perfect, but it's easier because with that, you only get one shot. Yeah. The way that Yoshi did it with him like falling off the chest that way, you only have one shot at opening it. Yeah, but you do have a bigger window to press A. I don't know how many right. frames it is. It's just a little bit easier. Yeah, you have quite a few frames. The... Uh... I do the method where you like stand up the uh, the right side of the chest just because I um I'm, I'm scared because I don't want to fall down. Exactly. <laughs> and, and miss a... So right here, I don't trust myself. <laughs> shout outs to Fu who really likes. Uh, where is the chest? Where is where, where where is it? Did I? Oops. <laughs> I'm in a little trouble finding the chest. That is okay. Uh, but shout outs to Fu. Right. She really likes the glitch because uh, I basically just unloaded a bunch of. Uh, where is this chest? That's down here. It is down. Find it. It's somewhere here. There, I say it again. This has never happened before. I can't find the chest. <laughs> Where is it? Is it further to the left? I have no idea. Oh, there it is. There it is. It's a lot there further to the left than I thought. So, uh, this is Fu's uh, favorite glitch because, well, what happens is you kind of unload the room by what is it so i basically entered frankly's house in paper mode but i didn't quite enter it fully so what happens is you essentially unload the game and like that fence is no longer loaded anymore so i can go down and get that chest that you're not supposed to get until a lot later and now the house in the background is just like you know it's just there you can see two yep. frankly's yeah, frankly, lost his wall. Unfortunately, they were doing some construction and they forgot to put it back up. So now he's got like a really open view into Rogueport. Yeah. So now we're going to go to chapter two. So like we were saying earlier, we couldn't actually access chapter two, even if we update the sequence to chapter seven, because this wouldn't be open. For whatever reason, it just doesn't open because it's based on flags instead of sequence positions. And there's Correct. actually going to be a segment in Chapter 2 where one of the flag sequences doesn't update as well, and we'll have to skip past it. Correct. You like Chapter 2, don't you, Justin? No. No? No. Not really. Fair enough. Chapter 2... I think it's cool in the speedrun, though. That is true. Yeah, Chapter 2 usually is people's least favorite, uh, at least casually. It's my least favorite casually, to be honest. But in the speedrun's cool. Do you get a say, though? Oh, sorry. No, no, that's it. That's all I wanted to say. Oh. <laughs> I was just going to say, when uh, that, that remake trailer dropped, oh my goodness, did this area look beautiful. Maybe I'll like chapter two more. Also, all the punies are just kind of chilling out here. Well, yeah, you just beat the chapter, obviously. <gasps> You're so right I beat the chapter. <laughs> Yeah, um, so earlier when Yoshi went to uh, to Chapter 7 and read the red notes, uh, we were talking about sequence positions and such. The way the game handles uh, story progression is, like, whenever you happen to, like, enter some sort of story event or interact with something in the game, it'll update your sequence point and move the story further ahead. Um, but Yoshi went ahead and read a note in Chapter 7 that also updates his sequence point and his story point. And now the game thinks that he has beaten everything from that point uh, uh, up to that point in the game. So yep. the game thinks he's beaten chapter one, two, three, four, five, and six, and partway into seven. Yep. So we were talking about the flags earlier. So unfortunately, this jabby hive is still here. So we have to do something called a Goombella buffer to get out of bounds, which is mm -hmm. basically done by using Goombella while entering the loading zone. And now I have to do an unspin jump with a pause. If I can get this. Hmm. There we go. Just to nice. go into the background and skip past the Now, I would hive. explain what you just did, but I don't know how to do it. So. <laughs> yeah, essentially what I did is I 
I unspun, jumped, paused, and then unpaused really fast. Mm -hmm. And this is actually the reason we need to get go into chapter two. We need to go get the super boots. And the reason we need the super boots is because we need to go to chapter six briefly. Yes. Um, getting the super boots or the ultra boots allows you to um, open the pipes to chapter one, two, uh, five, and six. Uh, which are like the blue pipes that are in Rogueport sewers. Uh, unfortunately, the Ultra Boots um, are in a really inconvenient spot because Very you have to go. You have to go onto the train in Chapter 6 to be able to access those. So they're like really deep into the chapter. It's not like uh, Chapter 2 here where you can just kind of walk in and leave. You have to go through the whole motions of Chapter 6 to get the Ultra Boots. So it's like a big time waster. I just lost As far as I'm aware, you can't even fight. finish it. Yeah, exactly. I just lost a Jabby High fight, by the way. That's unfortunate. I know! I can't believe it. Maybe you should get some punies to help you out next time. Yeah, I really should. Maybe I should just leave. I'm just going to leave this chapter. But, you know, that that <laughs> you know losing that just kind of took a toll on me. It just wasn't really... Uh, re you know, I, I don't know. I just I, I thought I would beat them. <laughs> yeah, you know, I thought you would too. So fun fact, the game's actually now set back to chapter two. It just thinks that I got the super boots, and now you'll notice that there's actually an X knot uh, coming up here. I'm gonna drop down briefly to get this Thunder Rage, and now I'm going to forget the Shine Sprite. Did get forget the Shine Sprite, but now I need to avoid this X knot right here, which is not too hard. He actually put himself in a pretty good position. Mm -hmm. But anyways, we are actually coming up on the first break that we will have for the run. So I will go ahead and get the countdown in just a second. Just going to go ahead and go through this room and get out of the tree. All right. So you can go ahead and pause in five, four, three, two, one. Pause. Cool. All right. So uh, as I mentioned, we're going to take a little break here, chat. We like to do breaks during these hotfix runs, give everyone a chance to stretch, do water, since we aren't doing a full-on marathon thing like AGDQ. Exactly. Uh, like we just did for that. So uh, we'll be back in just a few minutes. Before we go, I want to make a couple of quick announcements. One, like I mentioned earlier, if you're not already following Yoshizilla and Minato on Twitch, please do so. If you're enjoying the run at all, definitely go drop them both a follow, and uh, you can check out more Paper Mario stuff and other stuff from them as well. Um, other than that, I want to mention that you can go to gamesofquick.com slash hotfix to learn about our shows and check out our schedule. And our next All Women and Femme speedrunning event, Frost of Tiles, is coming up March 3rd through the 10th. Schedule just came out pretty recently. You can use exclamation point FF in Twitch chat to learn more. Remote volunteer submissions and prize submissions are open, so you can go to gamesofquick.com slash frame for tiles for more info. And uh, we'll be back in just a few minutes with more of this awesome TTYD run. See you then. Hello and welcome back everybody to the GDQ Hotfix. I am your host, Etchy. We are now going to enter the second half of this Paper Mario Thousand Year Door speedrun that apparently is doing pretty well pace-wise, so I'm very excited for this. Uh, before we get into the run again, I uh, just want to remind everyone that your subs, Prime Gaming subs, Gift subs, and Bitch cheered on the Twitch channel here at GDQ help support the Games Liquid Hotfix. If you enjoy watching speedruns daily, consider subscribing to the channel. Also, uh, we have... Another marathon event coming up soon, Unapologetically Black and Fast. That'll be live on this Twitch channel February 16th and through the 19th. Uh, come celebrate by watching a four-day event full of, of speedruns and black joy. Use exclamation point UBAF in Twitch chat for more info. And uh, I'll go ahead and throw it to Yoshi to get us back into the run. Yeah, well, first off, speaking of the subs, thank you, Livy, for the sub to GDQ. <laughs> that was really generous. Yo. Thank you so much. All right, with that, I'll go ahead and give the countdown. I am still joined with Minato. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> all right all right three two one let's continue let's go all right so we just left the great tree and we are going to continue with the next part of the run and this is where it's probably going to get a bit interesting because the biggest rng part is coming up in the run well one of them at least that is Chapter 3. Are you a fan of Chapter 3, Justin? Or do you hate it as much as I do? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I enjoy Chapter 3. Chapter 3 is good. Uh, not so much in the speedrun, I guess. Because um, all I'll say is that I'm a mainly 100% runner for this game. Yes. And it is not very fun in 100%. It yeah. is not a lot of fun. Because you have to it. go... 
Mm -hmm. Casually, we enjoy that part of the run. Um, or not part of the run. Like, casually, Chapter 3 is usually really fun, but in the speed yeah. run, it's just so bad. Yeah, you're not... Not wrong about that, that's for sure. Yeah. It's unfortunate. And, um... In 100% runs of this, uh, compared to any percent, you need to complete the entirety of the chapter. You know, obviously, because it's 100%. Um... But in any percent, all you need to do is go through and uh, get Yoshi, and then you can just leave. Yep. Um, but also in 100%, you need to deal with Tattles. So you need to manage uh, your conditions a lot more, I guess, uh, maybe frugally. As yeah, opposed exactly. to some, some of the stuff that you have to do. This isn't 100%. This is any percent. We were talking about flags and sequences earlier, right? Well, this is also a flag slash sequence. I think it's a sequence. But, it is. Uh, so, yeah. It, Go ahead. <laughs> it is a sequence. Oh, I was just going to say, so, yeah, we were talking about earlier. Um, Yoshi reading the uh, the Red Note in Chapter 7 changed the sequence point to Chapter 7. Uh, him getting the Super Boots in Chapter 2 changed it to Chapter 2, so it reverted him back. So the game only thought that he had completed the game up to that point in Chapter 2. And now he read the note on the door in front of Pashi Sanctum. So now the game thinks that he just got off the train. Yeah. Without a train ticket, you know? Yeah. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and save. I, I, you know, I think it's good to save during a marathon run, right? Yeah. That's nothing wrong with a few safety saves. Yeah. You know, uh, it, it's just, it's just so much better. Uh, but anyways, I, I actually can't complete chapter six right now because I don't have the ultra boots. So let's go ahead and go back real quickly and let's actually get that. Let's go ahead and get that jump storage again. Yeah, that's that's a pretty good idea. Yeah, I think it's a pretty good. So we're just going to go ahead and go back to that very easy point where we can get the the, the jump storage. We're gonna, yeah. We have to avoid a few of these enemies. And that's actually another way to tell that our sequence has been updated because earlier... So it was funny. When we were entering Chapter 2, it was Magic Koopas and Koopa Trolls. But then when we left Chapter 2, it was Spinyas. Or it was, yes, yes, yeah, Spinyas. <laughs> and now it's back to Koopa Troopas or Hammer Bros and, you know, Magic Koopas. So, yeah. you, you know, it kind of jumps all over the place. I don't know when the enemies change, but like partway through the game, the uh, enemies get swapped out for Spinios, which are su supposed to be Bowser's I, minions. I and, believe it's uh, after you leave chapter five, because when you come okay. back, that is when everything happens. Yeah, okay. That, that sounds about right, because I think that's when like Bowser is around the Rogueport area, so that, uh, you know, that adds up. Yeah, so another easy jump storage. So I need to make sure I actually yeah. don't jump at all, because if I jump, then Mario just kind of like do like a little whoa in midair. Or not in midair, just on the ground, and he won't be able to... Oh, shoot, I got into an encounter. Yoshi! I didn't mean to do that. Let me just get the super guard. Oh, I missed it. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, little, no. Little I, oh, shoot, I didn't mean to attack you. That I meant to run away. Okay, Coops, run away. Oh, oh no, I didn't mean to do that. That was that wasn't intentional. Oh, shoot. Okay, that, you, bad RNG, actually. <laughs> but, no, it's okay. Oh, they yeah, I can run. You, oh, so no, be able to... I died. Oh, shit. You had so many opportunities to run away, and I you just did. didn't do it. I yeah, game over. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, GDQ. I didn't mean to. I totally yeah, meant to. Yeah, runs over. Pack it up. I totally meant to. <laughs> so Jokes aside, yeah. um, you, you want me to explain yeah, it? Go ahead. Go ahead. You want to go ahead? Okay. Um, so uh, jump storage actually uh, persists over save files. So if you have achieved jump storage um, over one file, for example, uh, and then die and go back to the, uh, the title screen and re-enter the file or a different file, you'll still have it. So what he had done was he purposefully saved the game, uh, went to get jump storage, died, and then reloaded his save uh, from where he was before. So at the moment, he currently has jump storage. Yeah. During my GDQ run, I put a lot more into the actual acting of like, oh, shoot, something went wrong. And I think I fooled a decent amount of people. But in this case, <laughs> because I have a feeling that people have seen the run, like at least a majority have seen the VOD, I was just full on sarcasm. You got to hope that people hadn't seen it yet, though. That is true. But I, I am getting word that you have been nominated for an Oscar for that performance. So congratulations, Yoshi. 
<laughs> Thank you. And now we can skip to... Was that you? That was you in chat that I think said that, because I did see someone saying, like, Yoshi needs an Oscar. Uh, like, an Oscar. I, I did not, but I'm glad someone else was on the same wavelength. <laughs> yeah. But, as you can oh, see, goodness. we just skipped right to the end, and that first Crystal Star was actually a fake. So... <laughs> That's cool, but well, of course you made it to the end. You just beat you just beat the chapter. Oh yeah, and just got to uh, there we go. You just got off the train. There we go. Yeah, you know, I don't know why you didn't use the ultra boots that you definitely got when you got off swag. the train. I just wanted to have swag. Mmm. Yeah. 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 Of course. Yeah. 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 Yeah, bro. So as I was talking about earlier, uh, the ultra boots are really lengthy to go out of your way to get and. You can't even get them with our current like party members and stuff. We uh, we would yeah. need Vivian yes. to uh, be able to like hide from two of the NPCs on the train and tube mode. And yeah, and tube mode. And without either of those, we would essentially just be soft locked on the train because there'd be no way to get off of it. Yeah. So doing that allows us to avoid getting the ultra boots, which is a good because it takes so long to get the ultra boots but the ultra boots i really like the ultra boots because it makes a trick easier but unfortunately yeah. well it's a good thing there are other really great categories to choose from if you decide to run the game if you want to do chapter six yeah and get the ultra boots Remember, any percent isn't the only category for this game or any speed game for that matter i know it's one of the most popular ones that is but true Speedrun.com is a good place to check out for lots of cool different categories you may not have heard of before. Speedrun.com slash Paper Mario Thousand Year Door. Shameless plug. But go look at some yeah. of the runs. Go look at the wraps. Join the Discord. Do all that stuff. Ye also, you Frank that, Lee right? is just going to appear again. You just had to make a drop in. Haha. -ha, quite literally. Yeah. <laughs> So I guess something we didn't mention earlier, but we were talking about speed swaps. You could actually do speed swaps with Peach and Bowser, and it does save, like, a little bit of time. Correct. What I was saying earlier with speed swapping is that uh, after you input, um, like, up and then start jumping to the left and right, you don't need to jump. Uh, you just maintain your speed uh, for longer periods of time. And since Bowser and Peach can't jump in, uh, I guess, the 3D space... Um, that is not possible. So you just basically alternate like up and right uh, when you're playing as uh, Bowser and Peach and you'll get a little bit of a speed boost. Yeah. Also, I just want to mention that Frankly is doing his best impression of a lurk emote. As you can see, he's like kind of... Oh, he, he really is! <laughs> ah, that'd be a really good emote there. Anyone got any lurk emotes that they love? Here, if I can, uh, if I can type it. Uh, I have my own lurk emote, which I think is pretty adorable. Drawn by none other than Swift Alu. We love you, Swift. We do love Swift in this house. This isn't a house. This is a Twitch stream. <laughs> we can pretend it's a house. We can pretend. Yeah, for all the uh, all the GDQ subs here, uh, Swift has one of the, the one of the new GDQ emotes is actually created by Swift. It's GDQ oh. Sprite. Definitely post that in the chat if yes. you are a sub. Swift is a talented artist and speedrunner. Also, frankly, and uh, Grotus kind of like merged there for a second, so <laughs> it became fun. one. They're pow they're too powerful. They're too powerful. He's so powerful that he can't decide a side. Mm -mm. Hi, Bowser. Now it Bowser and frankly are best friends. They are. Friendship ended with Peach and Grotus. Bowser's my new best friend. True. I love that meme. Same. Oh, hey, it's Luigi. Who's that? Yeah, who? Who? <laughs> who? <laughs> Anyways, welcome to the only level that we're going to see. There are technically three Bowser levels like this. This is the final one that we get to see during the run. It's actually a pretty interesting concept because I believe this was like the like the what is it like bef inspiration? Yeah, bef well, not no, not the inspiration, but like this was like the first time Mario Bros had been like referenced since hmm. uh, Super Mario Bros. Three, I think. Okay. Because I I don't think the new the new series had like the new Mario Bros. series had come out yet. 
No, that was 2006, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. The first one. Also, hi, MDS. Frankly. He just came out of the castle. Yeah, he came to greet us. I'm surprised Frankly is even on this map. <laughs> I know, right? It's like, he's <laughs> everywhere. But, you know, at the same time, we see Flavio, like, drop through the credits, so I guess I'm, I shouldn't be too surprised, I suppose. I think that's my favorite part of Flavio. When all is said and done, he falls through the credits. Mm -hmm. Hey, look, it's a crystal star. <gasps> Bowser did it. He got the crystal star. We kind of skipped a lot of the Bowser sequences, but Bowser essentially hears that Mario's out after the crystal stars, and he's like, oh, well, I want to have the crystal stars, actually. So Yeah, Bowser's like always two steps behind Mario in this game. Quite until literally. the very end. Yeah, quite when literally. When he just literally crashes down on top of you. Oh my gosh, spoilers. Oh. But yeah, you're right. He just crashed top. All right, I'm going to remember to spam A right here and save. This is a safety save because I am about to do one of the biggest skips of the run. This was like after Pal Skip, this was like the last biggest skip that we wanted to discover, which is the limp <laughs> ticket skip. You can take it away and explain it if you would like to. Um, now you see, I would do that, but I also don't uh, do blimp ticket skips <laughs> in don't. any of the categories I do. That so I, I could try my best to explain it, if you're cool with that. Go for it. All right, so similar to teleporter room early, Yoshi is going to be doing an unspin jump through the door and the train car here um, to clip out of bounds uh, instead of like trying to go through the wall to the teleporter room. And he's going to try to get down onto the train tracks. And there is an email trigger a little bit off to the right side of where he's currently standing at. And once he jumps down, he's going to position Coops into a specific spot to where he can try to get jump storage off of that email, similar to the teleporter room door uh, from earlier, uh, when he definitely uh, died on accident Yeah. after his safety save. You know, like uh, like Yoshi said, just just now uh, safety saves are important as we saw he died earlier yeah there we go so what i was doing <laughs> what i was doing there is there is a very specific like art where you need to like clip in right there uh it's a, mm -hmm. it's a lot easier than um it's a lot easier than teleport room early but it's like a very very specific position oops okay so now i'm going to do something similar that i did earlier i'm going to use coops while entering this email cutscene. Uh, if I can get it. And this is going to allow me to get jump storage. So let's go ahead and try it again. <laughs> I'm going a little too short. That's okay. Yeah. You got this. All right. So that Pretty sure you got yeah, that. should be good. So if I did this right, then I should be able to levitate over this tall barrier. Correct. There we go. Woohoo! It is Whee! a very, very tall barrier, as you can see. Yes. You'd think you can just kind of like sneak on by the cheap cheap sitting there, but no. Uh, that would make too much sense, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, you know. Yeah, I guess that wouldn't little, make too uh, sense. Right. That would make a little too much sense. <laughs> <laughs> um, one thing to note, actually, um, you'll see Yoshi, he went into the pipe and then went into the uh, the background there, right? Uh, to enter the blimp. You can actually super jump to the background and land. <laughs> so uh, stupid. Like, I know, you, you can just barely like land on the backdrop there and enter the blimp from that way. Like you don't have to go through the pipe. You'll see that in tasks and stuff. And I think some people do it, like if they're on a bad run or something just to mess around. Um, but it, it looks really funny watching like normal sized Mario go up the blimp. Yeah. I don't really feel like doing chapter three. I'm actually going to leave. That's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I'm, I'm not really the biggest fan of chapter three, like I said earlier in speedrun. So, you know, I'm going to get on out of yeah, here. Yeah, just get on out of here. <laughs> oh, but Yoshi. I kind of need Yoshi. But you're Yoshi. I am. I already got you. But I need a kid Yoshi. Oh, uh, let's just go back to when you first started speedrunning the game. True. And by that, we mean let's go back to Blitzville. <laughs> <laughs> so similar to like what we've been talking about earlier with a bunch of flags and stuff, because we entered Chapter 3 for the first time just now, it's actually set at like a state where it's like, you just beat Chapter 3. You can't go back into Glitz Pit because you already beat it. So we have to leave and come back. 
But we do have the blimp ticket, funny enough. Oh, yeah, I guess you do. At least in this instance, you do. Yeah, the game doesn't actually check if you have the blimp ticket. It just assumes you have it. Yeah, I never even thought about that. Huh. Oh, man, there's Rockhawk and all of his fans. So what is Rockhawk supposed to be, like a chicken or something? I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, little inside joke. <clears throat> well, yeah, a little bit of one. Yeah, I flipped from like many years ago. Oh, I had said on stream. Oh, that, that's not good. I had said on, I had said on stream like, oh, I wonder what kind of bird rock hawk is a chicken and then i'm immediately i realized my mistake yep so this is where Ugh. we get to translate a bit of japanese stuff so jolene or grubba grubba's not actually here but jolene is going to be giving us conditions and it is completely random. She can give us stuff like don't use FP, which is what she gave us. She can give us stuff like appeal to the crowd three times. Beat this enemy before you take 20 HP of damage. Stuff like that. And they can really lose a lot of time depending on what the condition is. This condition isn't too bad, but I'm going to be using star power, which I can get use a special move. So if I get use a special move, that's going to really suck later on. But the way we translate these conditions is we look for certain characters. Like, in that case, FP is, like, capitalized, so it's really easy to tell what that condition is. But there's other stuff... It's the stuff. only thing that's in the alphabet. Yeah. There's, uh, there's some other stuff that uh, makes it a little easier. Like, there's a three and a square kind of icon. That basically means appeal three times. And then there's, like, a little bit of harder ones, which is, like, don't jump with Mario or don't attack with partner. And in that case, we recognize certain Japanese characters. I think everyone uses about the same thing, uh, but... Yeah, there's a few different things you can look for, yeah. but yeah, I'm pretty sure you're right. All right, that right there was Don't Attack with Partner, which is completely fine. I would explain how I, how I like, what I look for whenever it comes to those conditions, but it'd probably be a little too confusing to figure it out. So if you go to the Thousand Year Door uh, speedrun.com link, you can look at the guide. I think it's under guides, and then it will. There will be a thing that says JP conditions, and that will essentially circle what you should look for when it comes to those conditions. Yeah, it's a little cheat sheet. It'll, it, it essentially describes like, oh, if you get this condition, this is what it means. Yep. So for most uh, of let's pick. Uh, uh, you can go ahead. I, I was just going to say that the condition, uh, as far as I'm aware, is always on the same text box, too. So if you, yeah. like, match through, like, three or four of them, it'll always be on that exact one. Yep. So what I was going to say real quickly is for most of this chapter, we're going to be... Appeal three times. We're going to be using Fright Masks because it's just the fastest way to take care of these enemies. And we actually want to have our experience set at a certain point. Because if we are over leveled, then that causes problems later. And if we're under leveled, that causes problems now. So we want to have, we want to level up, but not get any more than five star points, essentially. So this is a little bit of a slow condition. We're going to appeal three times, and these guys are going to get a chance to attack mm -hmm. or spawn uh, a new enemy in. Oh, one thing to note as well uh, is that when you um, when you go through chapter three for the first time, there is a set different, uh, distinct difference between minor league conditions and major league conditions. That is true. Um, but due to Yoshi advancing the story past uh, chapter three the first time, the game already assumes that you've beaten it once before. And due to that, uh, the conditions for Major League are also in Minor League now. Yep. To just make it more of a uh, challenge your second time through. Yep. So due to that, you have to deal with them in the speedrun. Otherwise, uh, you'd have a bit of an easier time in the Minor League. Yeah. On your first time through. Yeah, because I believe, like, there's not that many bad Minor League conditions you can get. Like, I don't think Take Damage Five Times is one you can get. I don't think Don't Attack with Mario and Don't Attack with Partner are ones you can get. I think you can get, like, Appeal one time. That one's not that bad. Yeah. It, 
At least I personally think if you get a condition that still, still allows you to finish the fight on your first set of turns, like uh, between your partner and Mario, I think it's fine. Yeah. So like appeal once really isn't the end of the world. Yep. So that condition I just got right there is beat the battle in five turns or less, which is a very easy condition to look for. We basically look for the five and then we look for whatever the symbol after that is. And mm -hmm. in this case, it kind of looks like a flag. Like, I don't know how to describe it. It just kind of looks like a flag. So that it, is it what looks look like for. what your your mind imagines it as. <laughs> yeah, it, it's whatever your mind imagine it, imagines it as, basically. Whenever I'm speedrunning this game and I'm in chapter three, I always have questions like, how are you reading the conditions? I just say the like, I, I know Japanese. I'm not technically wrong. I know I know what the game is conveying to me. Yeah, it's, am I technically wrong? No, I can't read everything that it's telling me. I can only read about 2% of it, <laughs> but I, I can make it out. Speaking of which, earlier in the run, I typed in some specific Japanese characters. That translates to Yoshi. I did see that. I was actually going to comment on that. Um, I was starting to run and make like a little joke about it, but I, I opted out of it. Fair enough. There's one of the conditions. Take damage five times. Now, it's actually not that bad of a condition because the good thing is, is if you actually jump on the spike enemies, it counts as taking damage. So Correct. We're, we have some spiked enemies here, so I'm just going to have Goombella in front and I'm going to jump on them and take some damage. So it's not the worst condition in the world. Still a bit slow, but not too bad. It's any type of damage uh, del uh, delivered upon Mario or his partner. So it's either like self-inflicted damage, the enemy attacking you. It can be the audience member throwing something at you. It could be a stage effect. Any any way that you take damage yeah, okay. will count. I hope, uh, please attack. Okay, good. Nice. All right, so then one more. Now, the good thing is, is I'm going to use a Fright Mask and the Spiny will actually get scared. Hopefully. Ideally, the Lakitu will run, too. Yeah. Yep. So there we go. The Lakitu does not have a 100% chance of running. Nope. And it's really unfortunate. Yeah, so these are... It is. It is incredibly unfortunate. Some, uh, Thankfully, at least, I'm pretty sure the Lakitu will only give you, like, three or four experience, so you could always have just jumped on it if it came down to it. And I do have two extra Fright Masks, just in case. Right. Right. Yeah, the, uh, the route does include extra freight masks just in case if uh, you get some bad conditions or an enemy happens to not run away or something. All right, so right there, pretty good condition. Don't use special moves. Mm -hmm. We weren't even going to plan on using them anyway. Nope, because it takes a while if exactly. you don't have the star the, power. The best conditions are the ones that aren't going to like interfere with what you're uh, with what the route is asking you to do. Yep. The ones that are like, uh, finish the fight in five turns or less. All right, ideally we're going to do that anyway, so. Yep. So right here, we're actually going to kill this guy because we do want a little bit of extra experience. And this guy only has like a 25% chance to run anyways. So mm -hmm. it's just better to kill him. So there we go. We are set up I, pretty well. I've had uh, times where only the puff stays around and both the, uh, the piter and the yeah it's I don't, I don't get it i don't get it yeah it's strange when stuff like that happens it's like okay it's annoying yep i guess something i should mention right now frankly is actually the egg you, you don't know it but frankly is actually the egg yeah he's programmed to be the egg right now <laughs> yeah so we actually don't need to get yoshi like, we don't need to go outside and get him. He just kind of joins our party. I don't know why yeah. that's the case. I think it's just based on our sequence position. But, like, we're in, like, yeah. a weird state where it's, like, the game essentially is in a state where it's, like, oh, you have beated Chapter 3, but you also haven't. Yeah, it's really weird. I don't I don't know exactly what the call is for the specifically with the egg. It has to do something with these, like, sequences and flags being kind of... I would assume they're messing with each other. Not to the point of where anything entirely breaks, but... Yeah. Alright, so we got a few fights coming up left. Uh, I don't want to jinx it, but um, we are... You jinxed it. I jinx it. You know what? I'm not even going to say anything. I'm just not even going to say anything. Uh, 
We'll, we'll just go Take ahead and damage five times right here. No, don't attack for the first three turns. Even better. I'm that's, actually gonna. Bro, that's, argu I'm, that's arguably worse. That's arguably worse. <laughs> I'm actually gonna sleep because I'm actually kind of at low health. Uh, so that's the worst condition you could probably get. I could run away if I wanted to, uh, and get a new condition. But sometimes you might just get the condition again. So I'll just go ahead and stick it out. This is not an incredibly bad fight to avoid. Actually, I didn't really need to heal, but that's fine. I am going to go ahead and swap to Coops because that's the fast text, the fastest amount of text you can do, and just let them let them hit me. I guess quick note: Super Guardian does not actually count as damaging them, but I believe if you if you Super Guard them, they'll light their fuse, and then they'll die anyway. So I think that will count. Uh, I've heard conflicting information about that. I don't know if. I, <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Well, you're you're not you're not directly attacking them though. That is true. So I I don't think it would count. I think it's only if you input a command that will directly hurt them. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. And this is why we get extra fright masks. The good thing is, is exactly. even if this guy like even if I like just decide to kill him, it wouldn't actually put me too high of level. But I just want to. Since I hadn't used an extra Fright Mask, I might as well just use it. I have one more extra for this last fight, so it's just better to use. Yeah, it'll be fun. I hope everyone is enjoying the run so far. I am definitely having a great time. Are you having a great time, Justin? Yeah, I'd, I would rate my time uh, currently at a 11 out of 10. Let's go. I'm having a good time. We're having a great time. Unfortunately, I got not the best condition for the last one. It is appeal three times. But it is thankfully not the worst condition in the world. I, you really did jinx yourself when you said I that. I really before. did, didn't I? But I could have gotten something worse. I could have gotten like don't use items, which would be like really, really bad. Or I could have gotten like um, I'm trying to think that like don't attack for the first three turns again, something like mm -hmm. that. But thankfully we're good. So we're just gonna go ahead and appeal three times, and we're gonna let these guys attack. I'm not gonna let them steal items. Because that would be bad. Right. Those ones always steal money from you, though, at least. Yeah, exactly. Ones in the back will steal items. Quick note, if you actually get don't use items, which is really bad because it messes up experience, you can actually let these guys steal items from you, and then they'll run away, and you won't get experience. So that's a little bit of a backup I do. Cool, they yeah. all ran. That's a cool backup. And... Perfect level up right here. This is exactly what I want. This is the first time in a while I've actually gotten like my leveling perfect. So mm -hmm. you love to see it. You do. Do you upgrade FP at all in this run or no? Nope. We do not upgrade okay. FP a single bit. You upgrade HP though, I think, right? We do. We upgraded okay. BP right there. And I believe, yeah, that, that's the last time we upgrade BP. The rest is going okay. into HP. Okay. I thought so. Such a different thing, because this is the only category where you upgrade BP before FP. You don't upgrade FP at all, and you upgrade HP. You don't upgrade HP in any other category. Yeah. Also, hey, Justin, you want to know what's better than two Franklies? Two Jolines. Two Jolines. Yeah. Yep. One thing to note as well is that uh, the reason Jolene is like showing up on the monitor and in person right now was just due to sequencing and flag mishaps from earlier. Yep. So now, thankfully, this condition does not matter whatsoever. We're going to skip it. I'm pretty sure that was like, I don't, I skipped it pretty fast, so I didn't even see what it was. But I think it was like, don't attack with Mario or something. Or I think it was don't switch partners. I believe that's what it was, which that's yeah, an interesting it was... condition. It's like, don't swap your partners. I always mix up don't swap partners and don't use partners whenever I'm doing runs. So oh, really? because of that, I'm like, all right, I'm not going to do either. <laughs> Fair enough. Also, Grubba's back. Ooh, these guys look tough. I didn't sign up for this. I think I should run away. I don't think I should fight these guys. They're pretty. Yeah, it'd be fun. This is, uh, that's like you're playing, uh, Mario and Luigi. They're gonna teach you new bros moves. Look, look they got colored shoes. 
They, they obviously must be trying to teach you a new bros move. That's true. That's what happens in Superstar Saga. I'm going to run away. That's like the easy way to know in that game. You come across some characters that share the same characteristics as Mario and Luigi. Oh boy, new ability learning soon. There are a decent amount of like, I think in the first three Paper Mario games, they have some sort of red and green character that's like, oh, this is Mario and Luigi. Also, I think that Yoshi's going to be blue. Actually, wait, no, because I paused. It's going to be a, it, wait, what is it going to be? No, it's pink. <laughs> I don't like pink. pink. Pink is my least favorite. I think the reason why it's pink is because I paused my, uh, like the game. And yeah. an interesting thing, this, um, oops. Okay. I guess that's your name. I meant to just press start and name <laughs> you Chibi Yoshi. Um, but, but yeah. So as I was saying, so the Yoshi code is actually based on like the in-game time for some reason. Mm. It's it's just based on the in-game time in this case because we skip like the sequence where we get Yoshi. And I believe if this was like if I didn't pause, this would have been like a green or a like maybe like a red Yoshi. But I got but I got pink because I paused my game for uh, a few minutes when we did the break. I can give you like an actual answer to that if you want as Go to why it. that happens. Go for it. Um, so normally when you get the Yoshi egg in game, uh, through normal means, uh, it starts uh, an in game timer and that in game timer will end up subtracting from your overall, uh, like playtime timer as far as I'm aware. Um, but since you get the Yoshi egg out of, uh, sequence, that timer never properly starts. So instead, it just subtracts from nothing, and it so happens that it lines up perfectly with the in-game timer in the game. So if you were yep. uh, doing a speedrun of TTYD and had live split up, uh, you'd be able to very easily judge what your uh, Yoshi color is going to be based off of uh, the in-game timer. Yep. Also, now we can get Super Jump by using Yoshi while collecting an item. So I just used it there to get that badge that we are going to sell later for coins. Actually, not later. We're going to oh, sell yeah. now. <laughs> the fun can begin. The fun can begin. Exactly. I guess quick little note, in the Japanese version, Glitzville is actually called Oolong Town. I don't know, that's probably not how you're actually supposed to pronounce it, but that is what it says. Oolong Town. And there's actually a thing that exists called Oolong Tea. I found that out from Malio at, uh, at SGDQ 2019. All right, so earlier we actually took on a trouble at the trouble center, and that exact trouble was Frankie. He lost his wedding ring, and basically we need to go find it for him. Now, thankfully, it's always in the same spot, but this is a very important trouble because it allows us to it allows us to buy a very very overpowered badge. It does. So and I will never understand how he got his ring where he did. The lore and the joke that we make is that he threw it away. He tried to throw it. Uh, uh, that, that reminds me of a, a childhood story I could share real quick if you don't mind. Go for it. We're mostly just going to be fleeing the trouble and selling badges, so go for it. Well, when I was younger... Um, I, uh, I, I didn't like, like, bananas or anything, and I was over at my grandmother's house, and she really wanted me to, like, finish the banana she was eating because she didn't want it to go to waste. She was, like, adamant on not wasting it. And I took, like, a bite of it, and I, I really didn't like it. So I took the remaining of it after she had, like, left the room, and I went into her backyard and chucked it over the fence. She saw me. She saw me do it from her bedroom window. She got really mad at me. Oh, no. <laughs> that just reminds me of that. Like, um, uh, Frankie there um, taking in, like, chucking it up on the ledge up there, trying to get it over the wall. Well, in the English version, and I believe the PAL version, he actually succeeds and gets it across the, uh, across the gap. So Yeah, he does. We joke in the English version he had a better throw. <laughs> All right, so we're going to be selling a lot of our badges 
And we just bought the Power Rush Partner Badge. Notice how we're getting a lot of our partner badges. We're gonna buy more. Let's go ahead and give Frankie his ring back and we will get the gold card, which will allow us to play, I believe it's the, what is it? It's the two, no. It's the, yeah, it's the tube mode game. Yeah, it's the tube mode mini game. I've accidentally started that. <laughs> oh no, what happens if you start it, but you don't have tube mode? Uh, it, you just like get put into it and you, you still roll up into a, a tube. That's true. Since the game automatically does it for you. Yep. <clears throat> so now we're going to be buying a bunch of Piantas. We're going to be buying specifically 136 of them. And then we're going to be buying four Power Rush Partners. Why the game lets you buy done. them, I don't know why. <laughs> well, I mean, you got to buy them to, like, start out. Yeah, well, why the game lets you buy multiple of them, I don't understand. <laughs> so I probably just don't assume you're wanting to buy tokens and then not play for the prizes is my assumption at least and they probably don't assume that you're going to purposely get into like <laughs> like two under five hp yeah exactly why would you want to change your stats around exactly so we're just going to be buying a few of them and then we're going to immediately throw all of them on yeah are you guys ready for a really, really overpowered Yoshi? I sure am. No. No? No. Can you, uh, can you not do that? I, don't, I really don't like when watching uh, you cheat this way, Yoshi. Well, it's not how the developers intended you to play the game. I want you to know that. Well, and you should feel really bad about it. But what about you, Echi? Am I allowed to do it? <laughs> um... I don't know. Oh, uh, man. I mean, I, you know what? Sure, why not? Okay. It's good, because I was going to go rogue anyways, even if they said no. Okay. I mean, <laughs> I mean uh, yeah, anyway, so we're going back to Chapter 7 now. So because we actually did most of Chapter 7 earlier, we don't have to do much. We just have to get one more key card, and then we have to just do the factory, and then we will be good. All right. We're going to go ahead and go down this elevator real quickly. And now we're going to do something called Fast Tile Room, which uh, I forget. I don't know exactly how it works. Uh, Monado, feel free to explain if you know. But we're basically going to ride Yoshi onto the tiles, and then it's going to speed them up. And mm. it'll just make this a lot faster. So we're just going to do that, and they're sped up now. Uh, so the reason this uh, works the way it does is when you first enter the room, you'll see like the tiles going around really fast in the room uh, as sort of like a, an example, like a... Uh, to show you uh, the tiles moving around. Um, and then when you get onto the tiles with Yoshi and then hop off of it, the game assumes that you have like failed um, and then it'll speed it back up uh, to like start the test back over again until you walk onto the platform it, um, and start them back up normally. So it just, the reason they speed up is because the game just assumes that you had failed it. Fair enough. So now we just got another jump storage. Uh, jump storage is very easy with Yoshi. You just need to have a, that's, okay, I'm just gonna lure him all the way over here. So <laughs> you basically just press X to ride Yoshi while you collect an item and it'll just, you'll store a jump. It works pretty much the same as Koops, albeit just like a little differently with like how the setup is, of course. But mm -hmm. doing that, we're going to do the same thing where we change our Y speed just by a little bit. And we're going to just jump over this thing. Just float over the wall. And get this key card. Yeah, doing jump storage the way with the item and uh, Yoshi uh, achieves the same results. Because what you're doing is you're essentially um, uh, oh, I not make causing this. Mario's no. jump <laughs> to be... Oh. Dang. You're essentially causing Mario's jump to be like overwritten. Or if you even want to say it that way. Uh, with like another action, so you're you're just you're canceling Mario's jump with another yeah. action, and it's storing it. Yeah, what that allows so us to do is skip going through the background one time, because <laughs> going through <laughs> this background takes a while. Got that right. 
not the end of the world. It's just you know, obviously you're you know, dang you, you right. don't want to you don't want to be slow. Yeah, this is a speed run. We're supposed to go fast. Exactly. It's not a slow run. It's a speed run. I've actually seen people do like slow runs, not of this game, but like of other games, and it's just like why. <laughs> I've done like fast playthroughs before. You know, I don't, I don't speed run like the Pikmin games for real, but I do the occasional like Pikmin trilogy because I just think they're fun. Even though I don't know anything about the actual runs. Oh no, no, no! What I mean <laughs> is they purposely like go slow. Like for example, oh. like Mario Bros. They like wait until like the like until you have one second remaining to touch the flag. Oh. Like a slow run. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, I see. I see what you're saying now. I did not pick up on what you were putting down. Yeah, this guy's got some really interesting mech, and there's a two on it. That implies that we were supposed to see the first one, but we didn't. No, this is the this is the first time we've seen this boss variant before. <gasps> yeah, you're right. You're right. The two just means that it's the second best one. That's true. So here we're Jumps going aside. to so yeah, here we're going to take advantage of point swapping our Yoshi. Yes. Um, I don't know if we had necessarily commented on that, but y Yoshi bought a bunch of uh, items from the Glitzville store. Uh, these like uh, point swaps. And what that allows you to do is take your FP and your HP and swap them with each other. Yep. So what Yoshi had done is he uh, he got his uh, FP down to one by using double dip because um, that uses four FP and then he swapped that with Yoshi's HP. So it gave him five FP and then put Yoshi in apparel. As you can see, I did a ton, a ton of damage right there. Yeah, because of all those badges. Yep. What is it? So we have plus one for Yoshi's main attack. Then we have plus mm -hmm. five, then plus two times five. So that's a lot of damage. It basically just means a lot of damage. Yep. And uh, some of these bosses have like extra defense and such. So it's not going to it's not going to uh, add up to be exactly uh, the exact number, depending on what their yeah. defense up is. Like, I don't I don't know how much defense uh, Magnus 2 has, for example. I think it's like three, maybe? Or mm -hmm. two, something like that. We got another crystal star. This is the third we are one. Our third one. Yeah. We only need four more. We're almost done. Yeah. But that's You're weird. Definitely gonna get those, right? Wasn't that supposed to be the last crystal star, though? Well, I mean that that one is like that one's called the crystal star. So it is. You're right. You're right. Yeah, the irony behind that is that these are called the Crystal Stars, but that's the only one that's that the is only called one. the Crystal Star. Let, let's see. I'm going to see if I can name all of them in order. Let's see. We've got so we got Diamond, Emerald, um, Gold, Ruby, Sapphire, Garnet, and then Crystal. Yeah, you're, you're right. You got it. Yeah. Personally, the Ruby one is my favorite for no reason in particular. Cough, cough. If you look at my pro Yoshi profile, it has the, a necklace of the Crystal <laughs> Star. I actually want to get something like that in real life so I can, like, wear it as a, like, just, like, wear, like, a star necklace. You could probably, I feel like you could probably commission somebody off of Etsy for the, something like that if there True. aren't already people selling that. There's a lot of fun stuff you can find on Etsy. That's true. So Bowser Found finally got a cool crystal star, except he didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, poor Bowser. Once again, two, two steps, steps behind Mario all the time. <laughs> yeah. I, I love that this Goomba just lands on Pennington's hat. Just, yeah. just chilling. <laughs> he doesn't so disrespectful. care. He just doesn't care. Uh, he really doesn't. Gold is your favorite because it's not even a gem. I guess you're right. Oh, uh, goodness. Yoshi's kind of hurting there. Maybe it's because he's at 1 HP. No, he's just tired. It's fun. Yeah, it's true. I guess, quick note, difference between the Japanese version as opposed to the other versions. You only heal after Chapter 1 in this game. After that, you keep your stats. But in, yeah. in the other versions, you heal after every chapter. 
Yeah, I feel like that was a bit of an oversight. I uh, I have an assumption that uh, when they localized the game, they realized that your stats went up after uh, chapter one and then they didn't after the others and probably uh, thought it was an oversight and changed it. Yeah, true. So unfortunately, tech is dying, unfortunately. Oh yeah, during one of the Peach intermissions earlier after the Garnet Star, um, you know, we were supposed to have some sort of bonding experience and get to know Tech more with the Peach intermissions and stuff. But we basically just hopped from, oh, hey, it's nice to meet you, Tech, to, oh, dang, barely know you who you are and you're getting shut down. Yep, System 32 got deleted. <laughs> I hate when that happens. You joke about that, but that does mess up your computer. <laughs> it does. That's why. That's why I'm saying it, Justin. Because if you delete System 32, it would suck. It would. As far as I'm aware, Windows doesn't even let you do that anymore. Yeah, I think they like finally prevented it because people tried to see what would happen if like if you delete System 32, and then it's like, yeah. uh oh. So I guess quick note: even though that we know about the teleporter, we're actually forced to go talk to Tech in order to leave the chapter. All the doors are locked, so we have to go to Tech, and he has to essentially let us pass. We have to say goodbye to him. All right, once again, everyone, make sure to stay hydrated. I just took a sip of water right before you said that. And I just took a sip of water right after you said that. Amazing. And goodbye, goodbye tech. tech. <laughs> I'm sure he definitely blows up. Yeah, definitely. You would never be able to go back there after the credits or anything. That would make no that sense, right? That would make right? no sense. What is actually the reason he survives? I don't know. I don't think they... Uh, maybe, maybe Tech explained it to you, but... Uh, I don't know. Oh, it's no. been a while since I played this in English. That is true. Hey, look, it's Frankly. It's I'm frankly. sure it's really him, too. It's really Frank. As far as we know, and as far as we know for the rest of the run, it is actually Frankly. That's true. Oh, which, by the way, I don't know if we have either of us commented on this, but Frankly isn't in our party anymore. Yeah. Oh, I got the I got the email of storage. Okay. Sick. Nice. Uh, right there, Yoshi dismounted off of the Yoshi at the same time that he um, uh, hit the email, and it, it gave him jump storage. It's effectively the same thing. It's just overriding Mario's jump. Yeah, I usually don't another go action. for that specific one. Well, I go for it, but there's people who sometimes actually set it up to try and get it, but I'm very bad at it, so I just kind of go for it randomly, and I sometimes get it. And if I don't get it, there is a star piece that we use to actually do essentially the same thing. Right. And we just bought a important badge right there. Um, I'm sorry, we bought an important badge right there. Correct grammar. <laughs> um, <laughs> so that is item hog, and we will be equipping that very shortly in order to essentially give us a better chance at an item drop because it's going to be important for the final glitch of the run. So, Justin, you told me I need to get all the crystal stars? There you yeah. go. I got all of them. Oh, I guess I guess you did get all of them. Oh, Mario must have had them before he left for Rugport. Yeah, Etchy, I didn't tell you this, but, like, there was a point of the run where just I went so fast, you just couldn't see what was happening. Uh -huh. And I just got all the crystal stars. I hope that's okay that, like, it wasn't shown on the on the topics. Yeah, yeah. I mean, sometimes you just gotta... Look look really carefully to see it. So Yeah. You wanna see me get those crystal stars? Wanna see me do, wanna it, see me again. do it again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, frankly left the party when we hatched the Yoshi. He became the Yoshi. He did. So with that, the thousand year door is open. And one thing I wanna mention because we've gotten this comment a lot, a lot of people have like said Hey, what if you find a way to get out of bounds in this room so you can just skip <laughs> right to the end? First off, we couldn't even beat the game even if that was possible. Second off, the loading zone doesn't exist until the Thousand Year Door is opened. Yeah, um, you can actually do a trick called Goombella Buffering, which was already shown off earlier, to get behind where the door is. Um, and even if that was the case, even if the loading zone was active, as far as I'm aware, you have to like open the door 
to actually activate it. Yep. But we successfully counted to eight, everyone. We did. Yep. You're right. We did it. We are in chapter eight. We did it. Yep. Now time to get through this chapter. So we've got a few more things coming up that we will be doing, but then we will do... It's really awesome. I love how this run is set up, especially for marathons. Pal Skip is the last run of the marathon, and it's a very complicated setup that we will get to in a little bit. But it is the last glitch, and it's really awesome in a marathon because it just builds up to that moment. It also can be very stressful. It can. It is a very hard trick, especially when you're on a PvP pace run. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, Chapter 3 and and Palace Skip are basically the two chapters to kill PBs because of the RNG mm -hmm. part. Yeah. You can sneak between these bullet bills here if you just uh, position yourself correctly. And you can also sneak bullet bill between launchers. these blasters. There we go. Yeah, nice job. There's also another way that you can get around those bullet bill blasters. If you have the Ultra Boots, there's a torch up on the wall. Oops. Uh, there's a torch up on the uh, uh, the back facing wall, um, and if you uh, spring jump, you can actually land up on top of it because for some reason it has collision. Just not really sure why. Yep. Other uh, hazard respawn glitch here that Yoshi is. Uh, I would assume you're gonna do it. Yep. Yep. It makes it so much uh, this easier. This is another case. Yeah. This is another case where uh, the uh, respawn points. Or uh, I guess the, uh, the spot to like update Mario's respawn points isn't uh, as soon as you enter the room. Oops. <laughs> oh, that's not good. He noticed me right away. That is okay. So what I'm attempting to do right here is I'm going to launch Koops out, and I'm basically going to get this Ember's attention so I can <laughs> do some invincibility, use some invincibility frames to get past these fire bars right here. Yes, you either need to use Vivian or have tube mode to get past these, and we don't have either. So we're just going to abuse uh, invincibility frames to get past them. Yep. There we go. I should make it past this one. There we go. Just had to jump over that Very one. Nice. Yeah, I think I sometimes get on Yoshi, but I just didn't that time. Did you get a speed glitch there or no? I did not get speed glitch. Speed glitch okay. is something that occurs if you press A when leaving a battle and gives you a bit of extra speed. I think it's actually I faster have... than riding Yoshi. It might be. I think you have uh, two frames to hit it. And as far as I'm aware, it's uh, it's faster on JP. I think if you do uh, speed glitch in quotes yeah. on US, you you actually walk slower. <laughs> yeah. It's only faster on JP. So making use of the shooting star that we got earlier and uh, time to make use of, you know, Point swaps. Yeah. Just quickly switch Coops to Peril and goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> instant level up here. A <laughs> hundred star points. Instant level up. We love to see it. Yeah. yeah. So the way experience works in this game compared to uh, more traditional RPGs. Um, so. With each level up in this game, it's always a flat rate of 100 um, uh, star points, where in other RPGs, it'll be like, oh, um, you need this much experience to reach your next level. And then every enemy will still like give you the same amount of experience. And then later game enemies will give you more. In this game, um, it'll it takes Mario's level and compares it to the level of the enemy that you're fighting. So since Mario is like really, really underleveled at this point in the game for what you're supposed to be at, it compares Mario's level to the level of the enemies and then it uh, disperses and gives you uh, experience depending on that. I believe the funny thing is, is that the, the golden bullet bills, they give you the same max experience, which is just one, even if you're at like a low level. Yeah, I think you're right about that. All right, gonna try and sneak past these bullets one more time. Ah, whatever, I got one at least. And then uh, once you're, uh, I think, once you're past the pastel level of an enemy, so like uh, Goombas or something, once you're like level five and Goombas are level one or two or something, you don't get any experience from them anymore, but you get like a participation experience for, for the battle if you complete it. <laughs> yeah, like thanks for playing. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I like... Uh, 
bosses like Bone Tail and Shadow Queen. Uh, I don't know if this is actually the case. It might be a, a little bit of a lie, but I think they're registered in the game as like level one or zero or something. They're really low level, so they uh, they don't give you any experience for that reason. Yeah, it's funny because for Shadow Queen, you're not like. In the first Paper Mario game, you're not supposed to get any experience after the final boss. But in this case, zero experience defaults to one. So basically, every enemy and every boss will give you at least one star point, no matter what level you're at. And welcome here to the Endless Room, where we have to follow the pattern of the torches on screen. Yeah. Well, little fun fact is that it's the opposite order of it is that it is in PM64. Really? I actually didn't know that. Yep. It learns something I'm, new every I'm day. Pretty sure about that. That also might be a lie, but I'm pretty sure that's the case. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, but Monado, it is time. I think it's time. We should start explaining Pal Skip. Before I explain Pal Skip, yeah, go I it. just gotta tell you that somebody likes your name. Somebody likes my name. Thank you. Yep. In chat. I like your name too. All right. You want me to explain it? Yeah, go ahead. Um, I guess quick note. Uh, so you can go ahead and explain the item drop method, but I'm only going to be giving the item drop probably three chances, and then I'm going to mm -hmm. like reset because the item drop is super bad RNG, or it's not the best RNG. So anyways, Manon, yeah. take it away. All right. So in the fourth room of these seemingly endless hallways here, um, the one that's don't forget to put, um, put Don't forget to put on item hog. <laughs> I just remembered. Yeah, that is that was a very good thing you need to do. Um, we are going to try to get an item drop from one of these embers in this room up here. Um, and uh, by doing so, we're going to be able to use that to perform palace skip by uh, Goombella buffering into the item and getting tech storage off of it. That's the, that's the first part. That's the uh, the most annoying part, in my opinion. Getting First, getting the item drop, and then Goombella buffering into the item is also quite annoying. So yeah, ideally, Yoshi will get an item drop here. Um, he put on a badge called Item Hog, which will increase the odds of him getting an item drop. No way. <laughs> he, got, he got it. He got it first try. That's really good. Wow. First I'm gonna, try. I'm going to let you focus on this a little bit. Um, yeah, you can you can explain, I guess, uh, the second part, like probably after I get it. Or you can start explaining okay. the second part now if you'd want, because uh, this isn't too hard. It's a little annoying, like you said, but it's not too hard. Okay. Uh, so right now what he's doing is he's doing like these little light tap jumps to get Goombella off screen and he's trying to buffer uh, do a, a Goombella buffer into this item which is going to get him tech storage. He wants to do it close enough to the ember uh, to where it'll encounter him after he pulls up the text box. So now he's going to try to run away from this battle while keeping the text box open by uh, mashing the A button and uh, the Z button at the same time. So he'll still uh, get the bar to go up uh, without um, losing the text box. Yep. So now I'm real quick, um, I want to keep this item on screen. Uh, items will despawn yes. after a certain amount of time. But if you hit the save block while collecting this item, it just sort of like ignores like the timer. Yeah, the timer just essentially disappears. All right, uh, I'm going to say let's go ahead and have like a little bit of focus and then we'll explain what happens after. Uh, hold on, let's, yeah, go right ahead. Let's line this up. So I'll go ahead and explain that I'm rotating my hammer twice because I'm going to swap to Yoshi and Yoshi's going to appear out of bounds. So now the hard yeah, part by him. Up. Yeah. By him spinning his hammer there and standing in that spot um, while facing a certain way, it'll uh, it'll push Yoshi through the wall. So when he leaves the battle here, uh, Yoshi will be out of bounds. All right. This might not run away. Oh, just barely. Sorry, you get another chance here. All right, here we go. I think you got it, yeah. That was about. That was one oh. frame early. Dang! No first try this That's time. Okay. That is okay. No first try. That's a no first that, was, that was really, one frame still early. Really good. Still really good though. 
Um, so I guess I can try to explain yeah, uh, go what's going it. on, what, what that part there. Um, so what Yoshi is essentially trying to do is he's trying to do this another trick on top of uh, what he's doing right now called uh, a Yoshi teleport, which um, from my understanding of it, uh, usually when you hop onto Yoshi, um, Yoshi will teleport to Mario um, instead of the opposite effect where Mario will teleport to Yoshi. Um, essentially, what he's trying to do is he's trying to get uh, Yoshi to fall through a certain part of the floor. Um, the and if... Hmm? It's just the item. It just keeps going that way. Go the other way! Go the other way? Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Continue. <laughs> it went all the way um, there. Oh my goodness. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen it go that far away. Huh. It's still going that way. <laughs> oh my goodness. Thank you. There we go. Yeah, you can go ahead and continue Goodness. real quickly. Um, essentially, what I was uh, going to say was um, Yoshi is trying to do a technique called a Yoshi teleport, which is trying to get Mario to essentially clip through the floor, but not go all the way through the floor. He's trying to hit... Uh, yeah, you're doing like the two-frame method, I think, right? Yep. Um, where he's trying to uh, get both Mario and Yoshi to clip uh, partway through the floor to where he falls out of balance, um, but doesn't fall too far out of balance where he can't engage the ember. So... Oh, that would have worked, but I had a bad pause. Ah, oh, that's unfortunate. Man. All right. That's Let's super do it again. unfortunate. Well, I guess you can kind of get the idea of what he was trying to do there. Uh, Mario's like head was kind of like uh, clipping through the uh, the floor there a little bit. He's trying to engage the ember while being out of bounds, essentially. Um, and with him engaging the ember um, while he's out of bounds like that, it'll cause him to uh, be dismounted off of Yoshi after he runs from the battle. And he'll be able to take the loading zone that's directly underneath the floor, essentially. Yep. Let's go ahead and do it again. Yeah, you got this. Yeah, you I got this. You're, you're, so, I got you're this. so close. You got, you got this. I got this. You're a pro. Yeah. It's really nice, though, when you can keep the item on screen, because you can basically take your yes. time with Pal Skip and then, uh, you know, and just kind of wait till you get it. I'm going to be fast with this. Right. There we go. Norm... Normally, if you don't, uh, like, keep the item on screen like that, you only have one shot at this, um, per attempt. So, if, uh, he didn't save the item on the screen, he would have had to reset the, uh, the console and try for a new item. There we go. There you go. Third All tries right, the so charm. Let's go. Nice! Now that he's hit the uh, the ember, uh, he's gonna hold. Uh, I think a little bit off of directly up, and he'll hit the hit the loading zone. Yep, and there it is. Power oh, skip. So yeah, there we go. There you go. And that is one of quite a few different ways of doing power skip. Yep, there are a bunch of other ways to do power skip. Uh, that this is probably like one of the hardest methods, but the way that you can do it on English or PAL is you have to clip Yoshi out of bounds and then do a seam walk, which takes like two minutes or something. Yeah. So to give an idea of like how grueling and long that is, you need to essentially take Yoshi and go into the go up to where the door was, where we entered the room originally from and push him out of bounds there. And then you need to like slowly while in paper mode, um, nu um, like slowly nudge him along the wall up to where uh, the loading zone is uh, to do power skip. Like the loading zone that Yoshi fell into. That's where you need to uh, have Yoshi go all the way up to. Yeah. Which is <laughs> maybe like three quarters of the way into the room. It's so annoying. But yeah, there you go. That yeah. is how to skip that as the final trick of the run. I'm actually glad I got mm -hmm. to show off the item drop this time because the item drop is... That is, uh, during AGDQ, I unfortunately did not get to show off the item drop because it didn't show up. But this time, I got to, so even though 
So at AGDQ, I got Palace Skip first try, but I didn't get to show off the item. But this time, I got to show off the item, and I got Palace Skip third try. But it's still a very great trick. Mm. <clears throat> I'm kind of, you know, it's funny. Uh, one of the one of the runners, Jake Bopdart, he kind of jokes with me how like I am one of the most consistent people that can get Palace Skip, and you know, it's it's just funny. Like I'm just like, you know, hey, I just I practice, you know. But hey, e yeah, even sometimes, exactly. even for me, it's hard. So there you go. So Jake, it's still hard for me. <laughs> <laughs> So here comes Grotus. Um, this is a hard fight, right? Yeah, I mean, he's one of the final bosses in the game. He's got to be hard. Yeah, he's very hard. Yeah, I mean, look, oh, look how difficult that was. Yeah. I had to, like, spam one R. Of the... I had to spam R. Yeah, that, that takes a lot of, like, hand mashing right there. All good right. job, I'll skip the. You yeah. did a really good job. Yeah, I'm, I am really glad I got to show off the item this time. <laughs> so there's Peach. Peach is unfortunately trapped in some sort of shield, I guess. Yeah, it's similar shield to the one that Grotus had up on himself in the battle. Yep. And now Mario gets struck a ton. Remember how earlier I said that Bowser's always like two steps behind Mario? Yeah. I think he is. Yeah. Like he's definitely two steps in front of Mario now. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that, right? Honestly, it looks like in terms of like Mario's footsteps, it's probably more like 10, 16. <laughs> yeah. So, when you casually play this game, you fight Grotus, you're like, man, that was a really hard fight. Oh, shoot, I have to fight Bowser and Cammy now. Yeah. Oh, sheesh, this was such a hard fight as a kid. Like, Grotus himself was hard, and then having to deal with Bowser and Cammy directly after that? Oh, oh, oh. But now we're going to make it a little easier. So, let's first say <laughs> goodbye to Cammy. And Some banger music here. Yeah. Oh, my. Are you serious? What do you do about that? I don't know. I think you just have to tank it. I'm going to have to super guard. And uh, OK, yeah, let's. Uh, this is going to be very interesting. I'm going to have to like super guard a lot. Nice. OK, I should probably. Oh, wait, I should probably swap to coops. I have never been in this situation before. Nice. OK. Uh, Okay, wait, okay, we're good, we're good, okay. Let's go ahead and yeah, swap yeah, the Yoshi. Yeah, swap, swap the Yoshi. Oh my then, gosh, yeah. that's never happened before. <laughs> oh. Uh, oh my oh gosh. The backup strats, I did not mean to. Are you kidding me right now? That's fine, that's fine. Wait, I need... Yeah, you're okay. Good. Oh, I, I had to hit the super guard, though. Oh my gosh. Sorry, I didn't mean... Did you have to hit that? Yeah, I would have died if I guarded that. He does, like, six arrows. Also, sorry, I got a little... I got a little loud, and my mic might have peaked a little bit, but I've just never seen that happen before. Oh my... Yeah, uh... So, for the people that aren't familiar with this game... Can someone clip that for me, please? Like, that yeah, entire I, fight. I gotcha. I gotcha. Um... So for anyone that isn't too familiar with this game, uh, that light that fell onto Bowser there um, it has a small chance of like electrifying him. And it if did he was just to that. Use, yeah, exactly. It did just that. If uh, if he had like happened to start using Yoshi and like ground pound on him, Yoshi would have taken damage to it and died. Let's see. I, need, I think I need to and, heal one of my partners because I think two of them. Oh no, no, Koops is good. Yeah, you're fine. You just leveled up. Yeah, um, which is intentional, so that's all good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that was like the most unlucky fight I've ever had. That was kind yeah, of funny. I, wow, I've never seen that before. Like that literally, like all, like the meme aside and the line aside, that has never happened before. Yeah, actually, I don't think I've ever seen that happen to somebody before. To get a, a light drop and then a bucket drop and have to hit okay. the super guards. Okay, you you. You better feel really lucky, though, that that bucket didn't hit Yoshi. <laughs> that is true. Oh, my God. Yeah, that would have killed him. Yeah, I have a live stream, but, uh, I, yeah, I would have had to, like, I, I don't know. I don't even know what I would have done in that state. I could have just probably. Yeah. I, I, I would have just, like, loaded up, like, a backup, like, thing. I mean, you would have uh, gone. We would have go gone to another break, and I would have been, like, <laughs> go to the break. <laughs> 
Actually, yeah, that would have been that would have been a good port, part to go to another break if something like that did happen. Because I could just like uh, we have the practice codes. Shout out to Zephylus and Piston Miner who made these practice codes, um, mm -hmm. where you can kind of like edit your stats. And what I probably would have done is I probably would have just like paused the timer and then like warped like and like fixed my stats, something like that. Hey, wait. He do have some really, really good practice codes. Probably some of the best in speedrunning, in my opinion. Yeah, it also has really great music. True. But yeah, so hope you guys have been enjoying this run. New things are happening to me that I've never seen before. But it, that's never happened. You know, that's never happened. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Make this the thumbnail. <laughs> 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 the thumbnail of like that's never happened before. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, Yoshi! The sky is getting all dark. The sky is falling. The sky is falling. But yeah, man. I, okay, I'm gonna honestly, I'm gonna be honest. I have never actually, I haven't really practiced those super guards. So the fact that I hit it like four times was really good. That just shows your your talent as a TTYD runner. <gasps> True. But you want to know what else is like, you know, it takes a lot of commitment. Doing a 100% run every day until you get Twitch partner. Gee, I wonder who would do something as stupid as that. Push out TV Certainly not Minata. somebody in the call with you right now. Etchy, you've done thousand year door runs until you got partner? <laughs> 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 what? This <laughs> is... <laughs> Today we learned. <laughs> Amazing. Oh yeah, I, on a, when the remake comes out, if it's a decent speed game, I totally want to learn it. It's oh, funny. Yeah. A lot of people ask me, "Am I going to do the speed uh, the remake?" That depends on what the game is like. It, it, yeah, it depends on. It's, what it's, it's like. hard to know how much they're going to change. There's Flavio. There he is. Oh yeah, there he is. Reference. We get to see some Flavio. I'm excited to see what they change in the remake. It's like they added stuff into the SMRPG remake and now the Mario versus Donkey Kong remake is supposedly adding like two brand new worlds. So yeah. I'd, I'd be more surprised if they don't add anything new into the game. Yeah, it's true. There's Frankly. See, it's the Frankly that we've known all along, right? Also, oh, we stuck in uh, in Gloomtail. Gloomtail. Right. Of course. You know, Gloomtail, the boss that we totally fought. And also, listen, I know, like, Peach is supposed to be, like, possessed by, you know, the Shadow Queen, but this is a pretty awesome look. Yeah. I don't know if she has, like, an official name. I just call her Shadow Peach. Yeah, I, I think she's just called Shadow Peach. Yeah. Who are these guys? I don't know. Uh, I know two of them. Uh, we saw uh, the blue and yellow hat one and, um... Uh, the uh, Axon Fortress at the start of the game. I don't know who the uh, the freak in the sheet is, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little he, is called, he is called that in the game. No, 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 I'm not wrong. That's not what I was laughing at. I was laughing at... Uh, did you did you notice that I, uh, I inputted down on that thing right there? <laughs> oh! No, I didn't. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, there is a game over that you can get on that screen if you input down an A. And sometimes during marathons, I like to input down, but then not press A just to scare people. Uh, you can actually mash B, and you won't uh, you won't become her slaves, thankfully. Yes, yes, that is one of those instances uh, that we like talked about earlier in the game where you have to select the option. Yeah, like uh, like with the tutorial um, earlier in the game. So right here, Yoshi's overpowered, but unfortunately, he is not overpowered enough to beat Shadow Queen in her invincibility fa uh, phase. So we just got to yeah. survive. And even if uh, Koops dies here, which he will, we have a life shroom. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to And um, yeah. uh, the reason Yoshi had to like upgrade his uh, HP and stuff was uh, essentially for this fight, just so he can like tank Shadow Queen's hits more easily. Don't you dare throw those rocks at me. All right, I hope Koops doesn't die here because then that will make things a little interesting. Which, um, oh, like, like I said uh, earlier, like maybe a half hour or there so ago, 
Wow, you, you could have put Mario to peril there. That would have been pretty funny. I would have. All right. Not that it would have done anything for you, but... Yeah. Uh, so, we have to attack her for three turns, uh, and then she will seal the audience and regain all of her HP. And it's actually very important that we switch back to Yoshi right there, because we want to have Yoshi out for the end of the fight coming up. Right. And you want him to get his HP back, of course. Like, you don't want him to be all yeah. sad and hurt. I know, right? All right, so... Little, uh, go ahead. Little, little thing that you can do there in that room oh, uh, before you, like, it. fade back. Yeah! Before you, like, fade back into the room there, uh, there is, like, one frame where you can just jump out of the battle and it'll, it'll displace Mario. Um, so, like, when the cutscene happens with the crystal stars shooting through the ceiling, it won't be in the center of the room. It'll be, like, slightly off. And you can also hold R there and get paper mode ending, that we like to call it. Yeah! I yeah. forgot to do it. I'm sorry. Is that slower on JP, though? It is slower. It slow stuff down. It is slower on JP. You are right. Hey, it would have still been fun to do. Yeah. You've, uh, you've been kicking some butt with this run, though. I have. Seriously, good job. Yeah, it's not, not trying to jinx it yet, but... Everyone pray in the chat because we have to give Mario our luck. In this case, you have to give me your luck. But you're Yoshi, you're not Mario. But Yoshi's the one doing all the damage. Do you have a Mario hat? I do not, actually. Oh, why did I think you did? I mean, I have a else. small Mario hat that goes on the plush. All right, time to get it. <laughs> if only. <laughs> but yeah, this is really, uh, really great music. Uh, I love this part. Oh, quick little developer uh, error note, or I don't what what like oversight. That blue yeah, oversight. Koopa right there is actually supposed to be King K, the yellow Koopa that you talk to and talks to you, but they I guess they put the wrong up. one in. Hope I wonder if they'll fix that for the remake. That's a good question. I don't know. Or I wonder if they did mm. fix that for the remake. I guess the remake is uh, coming out this year. Yeah, it's coming out. We do, we don't have Which, a date yet. So soon. Yeah. Uh, from what I heard, the game has like already been rated in some part of the world. Um, so, it, good chance it's close to being done. Look at the and light. They must have fired on that as soon as they were firing off SMRPG too. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. True. Yeah, we've, we've got a lot of great games, haven't we? Yeah, they've they've been like sh uh, shooting out some uh, some good titles. Yeah, for sure. Oh, I, I did want to ask you a question, Yoshi. Do you know like who any of these people are? I don't I don't remember seeing most of them. I mean, I know that penguin. We saw that penguin. Oh yeah, I guess we did see him for a little yeah. bit. Yeah, saw that penguin. He's saying Luigi for some reason though. I don't know, I don't know what that's about. You could read Japanese. Yeah. True. <laughs> <laughs> just true I don't even know who any of these characters are this must be Pittsburgh because it was snowing a lot during AGDQ no, this is Canada true where it's like minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit on average <laughs> I wouldn't say it's that bad So as you can see, everyone is sending their hope and love and like, you know, and their power and, you know, with the power of the seven crystal stars, Shadow Queen will be vulnerable again. They're sending in all the blessings. Yep. <laughs> It's Peach. It's Peach. She's giving us. She's giving us her power. The last. She's of her sending power. her energy. Ah, oh, good. Yoshi isn't tired anymore. Thank goodness. I kind of missed him being tired, though. <laughs> he was a lot more powerful when he was tired. Let's make him tired again. That's a good idea. Welcome to the true final boss. The third phase, I guess you Shadow could call Queen it. Shadow Queen 2. Yeah, Shadow Queen 2. Electric Boogaloo. So <laughs> we're going to immediately hide Yoshi with that boost sheet, and then we are going to use the point swap, make him tired. Good night, Yoshi. So a lot of the runs before, like a lot of the any percent runs before we have this route was always Mario gets to peril, 
and protect Mario. But now it's make sure that your partner is in peril and just tank Mar tank with Mario. So now we're gonna go ahead. It's a nice change of pace. Yeah, exactly. So thankfully she did not steal HP, so this is gonna be really easy. And just to guarantee that Mario does not die this next turn, we are going to use that last Ultra Shoom that we got. And we will guaranteed survive this next, uh, this next turn. Ha, <laughs> good. All right, she's gonna do her little supercharge, but hate to break it to you, but she's gonna die here. Yeah, sorry, Shadow Queen. Bye bye Shadow Queen. And there we go. And she's dead. She's dead. Time is not just yet. We will go ahead and time to the credits like usual because this gives us a chance to give some shout outs. But that is basically the run. Now it's time for the most difficult part of the run. Mashing. Hitting A and B. Yeah, hitting <laughs> A and B. <laughs> yeah, there we go. So I'm looking at the time right now. This is going to be a 228. And I think, funny enough, I was actually on PB pace going into Palace Skip. And this might have kind of PB'd if I, if I got Palace Skip first try because uh, my PB is a 221. And I believe Palace Skip took like maybe like a few minutes to get. So mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I, this, this was actually PB pace because uh, I had a good RNG. But then... Uh, Took a little bit to get pal skip, which is all good. And it wouldn't have been yeah. a real PB anyways, because we paused. <laughs> right. Still, though, you you did a really, really killer job with this run, dude. Yeah. Of this. Yeah, and I want to thank, you know, Etchy for reaching out to me. Well, actually, I want to thank Swift and Etchy for reaching out to me, because Etchy went to Swift to to reach out to me, because uh, Etchy needed yeah. my Discord. <laughs> and Etchy yeah. was like, yo, what's Yoshi's Discord? And uh, Swift gave it to him. So uh, thank you for reaching out for me to do this. I'm glad that, yeah. you know, all the people watching got to see Thousand Year Door again. Uh, you know, even because it was at like such a late time for, uh, for you know, for AGDQ or early time, depending on your point of view. And this was yeah. a really good run. Uh, you know, I think both runs, you know, like I wouldn't necessarily say like one run was better than the other. I think both runs had like, you know, they were both good, like. Uh, I think this is actually going to be about the same time if I were to take into account that I got Flavio. Because without Flavio, I think uh, my um, AGQ run would be like somewhere around like 229. And this is going to be about 228. So this is about the same about the same run. So, hey, can't complain. I really cool, can't. Cool. The consistency is really hitting hard here. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, I want to thank, you know, Etchy and your GQ team and GDQ Hotpicks for letting me run this game again. You know, it was funny. I literally was on my way back from AGDQ and I get a message from Etchy being like, hey, you want to run Thousand Year Door this Friday? Heck yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, why wouldn't I? And there's a bunch of other people that you can check out if you want to watch some Thousand Year Door runs. You can obviously check out me, Yoshi underscore Zilla. I'm going to try. I don't really stream too often, but I'm going to try and get back into streaming a little more frequently because I would like to get a sub 220. My current PB is a 221. So if you want to see the grind for me to get sub 220, then make sure to follow me there. You can follow Monado, where he does some Thousand Year Door every so often. Uh, yeah. He's, a, he's on a little bit of a break. Yeah, he's on a little bit of a break, but when he does Thousand Year Door, you can expect him to do stuff like glitchless, 100%, max upgrades, stuff like that. There's no, also, I don't touch any percent. Yeah. <laughs> We're, we're, we'll get you here eventually. <laughs> You're coping on that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if you really want to check out any Thousand Year Door Runners, just go to uh, speedrun.com and you can see a bunch of names of people who do runs. There are some more active than others. And, you know, you can just check out some awesome Thousand Year Door Runs, you know, here and there. Paul Yoshi, I just think he's cool. True, I am pretty cool. I'd say I'm pretty cool. But I think it's cool that I get to run this game and I did this run in front of all of you amazing people. I think you guys are the cool people for tuning in and watching on this Friday evening. I don't know. They didn't do the run. 
You did. Fair enough. <laughs> you are all very cool. Yeah. Um, and again, <laughs> if you if you want to see more of this, definitely go check out Yoshi's AGDQ run. Uh, it's on the GDQ YouTube channel, uh, along with all of the other hotfix spots and stuff. But definitely go check out that run and uh, experience the same thing, but completely different. As yeah. in, like, different outcomes of how everything went, but still basically the same time, and also Flavia. So. Yeah, and also Flavia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because in the AGDQ run, TRE took a little bit to get, but I got power skip first try. In this case, TRE was really good, but it took me a little bit to get power skip. So hey, right. different endings, different outcomes. Very cool, very cool. This credit sequence is, or this like build up to the credits is so long. Yeah, yeah, it, it, <laughs> it is. is. Yeah, y usually, you know, you know, it was funny. We used to actually time to the end after the credits, but then we were yeah. like, can we just time, you know? When the uh, the fade out is, so ended oh, up. So glad I didn't yeah, because there's no relevant inputs era. really, right? After that point, it's, you're just watching the credits yeah. pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Like That's a line of like, like Japanese timing, rolling. right? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Let me give a few more shout outs. Shouts to Solidify yeah. Gaming and Really Tall. Both of them are awesome glitch hunters that found most of the tricks in this game. Uh, there's a bunch of other people that found runs as well. Uh, I apologize if I don't name you specifically but uh zeph and piston miner uh went into a lot of reverse engineering as well as i believe jd acer they found um they were able at least piston and zephless i know they made a lot of the practice codes which man i would not run i don't think i'd be able to practice this game or like run this game without those practice codes they're really great yeah the practice codes in this game are probably like i said earlier probably some of the best um in just speed running in general they did a stand-up job with them yeah but yeah, other than that, you know, just, you know, shouts to all of you for, you know, watching this run. You know, I am, I've been running this game. It's crazy to think that in February, I would have been running this game for eight years. It doesn't feel like that, but I uh, still love this game and I will still run it for as long as I can. You know, it's wild. You, you So I am like, all, I'm, I'm like eight years older than you. <laughs> and um, <laughs> you speed, you've been speed running for twice as long as I have. Wow. Wow. <laughs> it's kind of crazy to think that I've been speedrunning. I started speedrunning at a young age, but the things I've been able to do have been awesome. Time is coming up. And it's just been an incredible journey. But with that, that is time. GG. There we go. GG. Good job, awesome. Yoshi. There Woo! it is. And we got Good the job. we got the amazing credits, but you know, they're like five minutes long. We already talked about it. But yeah, there we go. What a solid run. What a what a great uh, opportunity to be able to do this again. Like I mentioned, if you want to see more, follow me, twitch.tv slash Yoshi underscore Zilla. But thank you all for letting me run this. Uh, Monado, thank you for commentating. Uh, for commentating. I'm so glad you got the second chance to commentate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for having me. I I really enjoyed doing this. Yeah, and thank you so awesome. much. And thank you all thank for watching. Thank you both watching. so so much. Uh again, definitely follow both Minato and Yoshizilla on Twitch. I would really appreciate it. It'd mean a lot to me. Um that's gonna be it for us today, except there's still more hotfix stuff coming. We're gonna have legally cute coming up after the break. And then I will also be returning on Sunday. I'm gonna be hosting another special. I'm actually gonna be running it as well. You should follow Etchy. Um Oh okay, yeah, sure. You could follow me. I do Pokemon stuff, but I'll uh, <laughs> I'll I'll shout out myself during my hotfix special on Sunday. Uh, so 12 p.m. Eastern, I'll be back. I'll be running Pokemon Platinum, a very long category called Elite Four Round Two. It's like five to six hours long. Uh, Swiftly will be there on commentary as well as Sparkle and Cormier, yes. so it should be a fun time. Yes. And uh, hope to see you all there. And again, stay tuned for Legally Break, Legally Cute, not Legally Break. <laughs> uh, coming up after the break, uh, we'll be back in a few minutes. Goodbye. Take care. <laughs>